This is what if Naruto was Kaguya's son. The most important thing to know for this what if is Naruto will be a full Otsutsuki, not half human, full Otsutsuki. He will be Kaguya and Ishiki's son. If you didn't know, Ishiki is supposedly the leader of the Otsutsuki clan, so Naruto is basically the prince of the Otsutsuki clan, similar to how I did it in the Astral Clan what if. Our story starts a day before Hagoromo and Hamura fight, fought against and sealed their mother, Kaguya Otsutsuki. However, unknown to them, Kaguya was bearing a child, and that child was born that evening. If you're wondering how Kaguya hid the fact that she's pregnant, um, let's just say that for Otsutsuki's pregnancy, is different so let's just say before kaguya left for earth ishiki and her spent a night together and had a good time right so instead of nine months pregnancy for otsutsuki take many years because full-blooded otsutsukis left for a very long time basically centuries i think so pregnancy also takes much longer However, all, all of that said and done, on the next day, right before Kaguya was sealed, she uses all the remaining chakra she has left to have Naruto, her son, reborn. Reincarnate into a human someday, so he can live a full life, because through the battle of Kaguya and her children, the land became devastated. And so Naruto died when he was only one day old. In this story, it's also a part of the reason why Kaguya made Black Zetsu. His mission is to, whenever Naruto reincarnates again and Kaguya is still sealed away, Black Zetsu is supposed to take care of Naruto. So, in this what if, Kaguya also gave Zetsu. About a Kage, a, a mid Kage level power level, which for her is like less than 1% of her power, but she knows that that's enough to protect Naruto from humans who want to harm him. So, Zetsu is a little stronger than he was in the original. But now, after the backstory, we now cut to the night of the Nine Tails attack, aka Naruto's birth. Now, the night starts out normal with Naruto being born. However, Naruto in this what if has kind of white slash silvery hair rather than yellow hair and that's mostly because of the otsutsuki dna that he has but he won't have his otsutsuki powers awakened yet similar to how indra and asha reincarnations aren't immediately using six paths chakra um but anyways or rather not Six paths chakra, but Asha and Idra chakra. But anyways, so something that goes different is, although Obito slash the Masked Man still attacks the Hidden Leaf Village and still causes the Nine Tails attack, Black Zetsu is also there because he he senses that Naruto has that Otsutsuki aura with him, and therefore knows. He is Naruto, son of Kaguya, reincarnated into a human. And so, right before Kurma was gonna kill Minato and Kushina, Zetsu, Black Zetsu uses a jutsu similar to the Shadow Possession jutsu that the Nara clan has. 
so Kurama stopped. And then, because plot of convenience, Minato and Kushina are able to seal the Nine Tails um, into Naruto without dying. Now, they don't know why Kurama suddenly stopped. Obviously, Kurama sensed that something was stopping him, but nobody really knew what it was, because there wasn't just a sh giant shadow underneath Kurama, because Black Setsu isn't stupid enough to do that. He knew to do it, well, in the shadows, but not literally, if you know what I mean. So, anyways, Naruto's childhood is going amazing, and although people kind of question why he has silvery hair, they don't care. He's the son of a fourth Hokage, and everybody loves him and respects him. However, then when he's about five or so, word comes out that he is a Jinshiriki. And although Minato doesn't like it, doesn't like that people know that, he's fine with it because he thought, well, I mean, what's gonna change? He's still the Hokage son, and he's just a normal person, like everyone else. But oh boy, was he wrong. Always when Naruto was alone, or at least without Minato or Kushina there, he kept getting glares from the villagers. And something important to mention is, Naruto has a daughter, uh, sorry, not her daughter, that'd be weird, a sister, two years younger than him. Her name is Karui. Don't confuse this with the Hidden Cloud Shinobi, I think. Hidden Cloud or Hidden Stone, I think that's Hidden Cloud. But I just chose that name because she also has red hair, so... She kind of resembles an Uzumaki, but anyways. So, Naruto's younger sister is going to be called Karui. Um, now, she had red hair, right? And the prophecy at the beginning, the Toad prophecy, said a blue-eyed shinobi and naruto doesn't quite have blue eyes he kind of has bluish eyes but karui has like really blue eyes so they think she is the child of prophecy so now the villagers and even minato and kushina are a little bit more interested in karui than they are in naruto now, this is not saying Minato and Kushina hate Naruto, it's just saying that they like Karui a little more. Especially Jiraiya. Because it's basically his job to train the Child of Prophecy. And so, over the months and years, people have started to kind of develop a hatred towards Naruto. And love Karui even more and more. And some people are even going as far as calling Karui the future Hokage, Lord Sixth, and the first female Hokage, which Kushina is very happy about because she once wanted to be the first female Hokage. And she's thinking that her daughter will fulfill that dream that she couldn't. And Naruto isn't that sad that his sister's getting attention. He's just a little sad that the villagers don't like him as much. And there is one weird thing he's been feeling. And that's the nine-tailed fox inside of him, of course, but he doesn't quite know it yet. But anyways... One faithful day, 
Naruto. By the way, this is what Naruto is. Let's say eight. Naruto's eight. Kur Kurui is six. So Naruto's walking alone in an alleyway. When suddenly, when he looks behind him, he sees Tuchunin, an Anbu, and even a Jonin. Um, and when he, when he then turns around again to start walking away, because he he's pretty frightened, he then sees three Genin standing on the other side of him. He's surrounded. He can't go anywhere. When suddenly the Anbu takes out some some kunai. Now Naruto is really frightened. There, there there's no way they'll harm him, right? He was wrong. They start beating Naruto and even going as far as actually scraping him with kunai until he's bleeding. And then, then worse comes to worse. The Anbu then uses his kunais, but also puts chakra into them. And actually uses strings to move them in different directions, so Naruto can't dodge the kunai. So he was about to dodge, but then the kunai suddenly changed direction and hit him right on his eye. And Naruto is blinded. Naruto ca can't see. And now, Kurama is furious, because he's actually kind of had a liking to Naruto. But now that he's seeing how much the villagers hate Naruto just because Kurama is inside of him, that makes him angry. Of course, Kurama doesn't know that Naruto is Kaguya's child, but, or rather, her child's reincarnation, but... Then, they keep hitting Naruto for a little bit until he falls unconscious. And then, Black Zetsu arrives, teleports all of them, or rather transports all of them away, and kills them. Because he will not allow, kind of his little brother in a way, to get hurt because he kind of had a mentality where he he was basically Kaguya's child so Naruto's like a little brother to him and so Naruto is then found by Minato and Kushina who were shopping to get some groceries with Kurui Because Naruto was actually, actually split up away from them to go play with his friends, but and then he was caught between the shinobi. Of course, Minato and Kushina don't see the shinobi that were hurting Naruto, so they didn't know what happened. All they see is Naruto beaten to a bloody pulp, and yeah, he's unconscious. They immediately bring him to the hospital, and the doctors frown. It's not looking too good. Naruto might not be waking up for a while. Now, he's not going into a coma or anything, but he was, like, seriously beaten to the point where some of his bones were broken. And, as I said, his eyes are completely ruined. 
However, Naruto, we, we cut a few minutes earlier where Naruto woke up in his mindscape. In front of him, he sees a cage in a sewer-like place, and inside, he doesn't see a frightening fox, he just sees a normal fox. He he sees that it can talk, and then asks for its name, but Kurma is a little reluctant to tell, but does so anyways. Kurma, huh? That's a cool name. So, where are we anyways? You're in your mindscape, Naruto. And how do you know my name? And why are you here? Kurma explains everything about Naruto being his Jinshuriki and that being the reason why everyone hates him. But that's still no way to treat a person, is it? Naruto asks. No, that that's not a good way to treat someone. And I'm sorry that you're being treated this way because of me. Oh, that's alright. It's not your fault, right? You said an Uchiha controlled you. Because Kurama actually explained that too. Because for the first time in a long time, Kurama felt a connection to a human. He felt like he could talk to someone. Because time in the mindscape goes much slower than outside, than in the real world. So they actually had a while to talk. And then, Naruto just completely gets, like, becomes unconscious, where he's at the point that he's not even awake in his mindscape anymore. Even Kurma is a little shocked and thinks maybe that was too much for the child. Not only did he get beaten to a bloody pulp to the point where he might not ever see again. But also, he just talked to a tailed beast. He might not make it. But Kurma doesn't want to think about that since he made a connection to a human. And now, if he loses Naruto, it's all ruined. But then, Naruto wakes up again, but neither in the real world nor in his mindscape. He wakes up which in a place which seems like it's above the clouds. And there, he sees a woman's back with long, silky hair, so silvery it could almost be his own. Then, when the woman turns around, she smiles. Hello, Naruto. I've been awaiting you. I've been waiting for you for a long, long time. Waiting for me? But who are you? I don't even know you. Oh, you might not know me now, but trust me, you'll know me later. Naruto's curious. Are you like Kurama, a tailed beast? No, no, I'm not. But you could say I used to be part of one. What? What does that supposed to mean? Well, you see, there are not only nine tailed beasts, there used to be a tenth. Ten? Ten tailed beast? Yes, and it actually used to be. Well, I used to be part of it. So, who are you, anyways? I'm 
a person called Kaguya Utsutsuki. I'm the founder of Chakra on this world. The founder of Chakra? So... So you're like... So you like made Chakra? Yes. Kaguya explains her story, as well as that Naruto is a reincarnation of her child. Wait, so do I have three parents? Well, actually, you also have another father. His name is Ishiki Utsutsuki. He's a very nice man, and he's the leader of the Utsutsuki clan. You know, the one I told you about that lives on our home planet? Yes, yes. We might visit him someday, once we leave Earth. Leave Earth? But... Then will I ever be able to see my family again? Ah. Oh. So you want to see your family again, huh? Alright then. You can see your family. There's no problem with that. But just keep in mind that we're also your family. Okay. So is it... Naruto stops. I want to give you a gift, Naruto. A gift? Wait a minute. How have I even been able to see? Didn't my eyes stop working? Yes, they did. And then how could I be able to see in my mindscape? Well, there, Kurama was helping you a little bit, but I was doing most of it. But here, well here, look into a mirror and suddenly a mirror pops up out of nowhere. What? How did you do that? Well, this is kind of the place I created, so I can do anything here. I see. Naruto looks into the mirror and sees his eyes, but they're not his normal eyes. They're white, like the Byakuga. I gave you new eyes, Naruto. New eyes? Why that? And how? Well, you see, your eyes were beyond repair, and if you would have been a normal human, you could have never been able to see again. And so I restored... I restored your eyesight. F -f Thank you so much. So, when will I wake up to the normal world again? Oh. Well, it depends what time you're talking about. What, what do you mean, what time? Well, in this world, it might take another week or so. But in the real world, it'll only take a day or so. Really? So time goes different, huh? Yes. Very different. I can even make it much slower here, so we have a year or so, if you want to. I mean... It'd be cool, but I would really miss my family. Ah, of course you would. I've all also missed you, because you're my family. That's sad. So you've really been waiting a thousand years, Mother Kaguya? Yeah, it's been a long time, huh? But I try to keep myself busy. They keep talking for a long time. And they actually start Naruto's training, because Naruto now has a drive, and he wants to unseal Kaguya so he can meet her in person, and also meet Ishiki. Because it seems like they would like him more than the villagers do. But he also still wants to be part of the Namikaze family. But, at first, he's enjoying his time with Kaguya. 
and of course Kurama as well. And so they train. And by the way, just to clarify, I know nobody asked, but just to clarify, Naruto did get the entire Nine Tails, and that's why the Nine Tails is a little bit kinder to Naruto in this. But also because Naruto reminds Kurama of Hagoromo, and Hagoromo is basically Kurama's dad. And I mean, he's not wrong, because he's Hagoromo's half-brother, so kind of makes sense, but anyways. Um, so then Naruto was beaten up by some villagers and even Shinobi of the Hidden Leaf Village. And he fell unconscious, and the very worst part, they even hurt his eyes so bad to the point where he was blind. But for some reason, he was able to see in his mindscape. And so, Kag Naruto met Kaguya in his mindscape, but before that, he met Kurma. Kurma talked to him about stuff, but with Kaguya, he really felt a connection, and... Well, Kurma was more of a friend, but Kaguya really understood Naruto. And... She really did feel like she was Naruto's mother more than Kushina had in the past two years or three years because she had really only interest in Karui. If you didn't know, that's or if you forgot, that's Naruto's little sister. She or younger than him. Again, look at the video, the last part, if you haven't seen it. Because the villagers and the Hokage think that she is the child of prophecy. Which, is that true? Eh, you'll have to find out. Now, we then cut to present time, where Naruto has had his talk with both Kurama and Kaguya, and he even got Byakugan eyes from Kaguya, as it's pretty much his birthright. And so now, training is on session. And if you're wondering why they have so much time, I'm just gonna say Kaguya can basically make, turn the mindscape, which already where the time already, well, goes much slower than in real life, she can increase that factor by even more to the point where instead of one day, she can have one year in Naruto's mindscape. So it's basically, well, yeah. Basically pretty OP if you ask me, because when he trains in this mindscape, he trains, like, his body gets stronger in real life. Pretty OP if you ask me. But anyways, oh yeah, and he never gets tired. He literally never gets tired, because he's in his mindscape, not in real life. So, after we gave him all this OP stuff, now the actual training part. Kaguya then nicely asks Kurma to also come to their heavenly, like, place. Because Kurma's, well, still in his prison cell, but Kaguya can easily change that. I mean, she's literally the founder of Chakra. So she does some Hocus Pocus Jutsu, and somehow, now there's just the Kurma standing behind her. And Kurma doesn't mind because, well, I mean, if you really think about it, Kaguya is kind of Kurma's grandmother in a way. But really, I mean, like, if I were Kurma, I'd be crazy scared of Kaguya, and he kind of is, because, I mean, she is at least as strong as Hagoromo, if not even stronger. And Hagoromo is also already a beast. Literally. Kind of. So... 
Naruto starts training and is even taught to use some of Kurama's chakra and power, which, as I said, Kurama is nicer, so he allows Naruto to take some of his chakra without actually influencing him and taking over Naruto's body. So Naruto is still in free will, but can access Kurama's chakra. Naruto then uses something similar to the multi-shadow clone jutsu, which I will find a name soon for. And if you guys have a name for it, you can write it down below. It's kind of like an Utsutsuki style shadow clone jutsu, which has a similar effect to the multi-shadow clone jutsu, where you can have your clones train, and that experience goes to you after they're disbanded. And now we, I'm going to say we cut to about half a year later. This is still in Naruto's mindscape because they're going to have about a year in Naruto's mindscape. Kuruma has kind of gotten used to the situation, as has Naruto. And funny enough, not only does Naruto never get tired, but he also never needs to sleep. And because Naruto basically sleeps 12 hours a day, he now has twice the time in the same time of the day, if that makes sense. And he has a whole year. So this, like, mindscape is just busted for training. But Naruto can access it no problem. And yeah, he never runs out of chakra. That's pretty amazing. So they train. Naruto has gotten more used to his 360... Almost 360. Actually, you know what? He has complete 360 degree sight. Because whilst Hyuga's have almost 360 degree sight with a blind spot, I'm just gonna say that because Naruto is a full Otsutsuki, they don't have that blind spot because let's just say that that's a human defect that humans evolved over time when the Otsutsuki bloodline was spread so thin that only the Byakugan was like 1% of the Otsutsuki strength. And so Naruto can actually see 50 times as far as a different person with a Byakugan could. So for example, let's say Neji could see a kilometer. Okay, that, that's maybe a little much. Let's see, Neji could see 100 meters far. Naruto can see 5 kilometers. Yeah. Yeah, I know. All right. Don't complain to me, complain to Ishiki. I, I should really make that a catchphrase. Okay. Anyways, I'm having way too much fun with this. Now. Kaguya actually does something interesting at this point. She, with her big brain, stops the tailed beast healing from Kurma that's being done on Naruto. So instead of a day in real life, it's gonna take a week. However, she doesn't do this so she has more time training or talking to Naruto because then she kind of lets go of her time-bending powers. And so even though they have a week in real life instead of a day, they still have about a year in their mindscape time. Why? Because Kaguya noticed that by doing that, Naruto is... Naruto's training is more effective because the more you bend time, the less, let's say, realistic um, training gets. And so, the closer to real time um, 
you're doing your training in, the more realistic it is, right? So if you make one day into a year, it's still a lot of training you can do. It's just not as much in one day than you would in a day in real life, if that makes any sense. I'm sorry for the confusion. Just sorry. Now, Naruto wakes up. Naruto wakes up. He is about... Yeah. Nobody saw him when he actually woke up. Because Minato was in his Hokage office. Kari Karui was playing with her friends. And Kushina was cooking at home dinner. Because it was already the evening. And, well, even though the first half day after Naruto's injuries. Because of Kuruma, it healed pretty quickly. After that, since Kaguya stopped the quick healing process. Naruto's healing went pretty slowly, so they didn't expect Naruto to wake up for a while now. The doctor said it could take up to a month. But nevertheless, Naruto woke up, but none of them knew. Whilst eating dinner, they hear knocking on the door. And all they see is an Anbu, an, an Anbu, what, wait, Kakashi, is that you? Minato sensei, N Naruto is, is he awake? Well, we don't know, he's, he's gone, gone, Minato asks, where could he have gone? We don't know. So, they track down Naruto, as Naruto is walking around the village. Now, right before they find Naruto, Kaguya does something pretty special, which she has actually told Naruto about. They put a genjutsu on Naruto's eyes, so that his eyes look like he can't see. It looks like he's blind because, I mean, not only does the Byakugan kind of look similar to as if a person would blind or is blind, kind of because they don't have a pupil. Um, so it's not that much crazy wizardy jutsu, genjutsu. And so Kaguya puts her genjutsu on Naruto. And they just see Naruto trotting around with completely white eyes. So they think he's turned blind. So they're just thinking he's trying to walk home but doesn't know where to walk to. So they bring him to Minato. And Naruto stops. Because he can clearly see them, but nobody knows that. And he doesn't want to show. Because he is... Well, he still likes the Namikaze family at this point. He... He also likes Kaguya. And does want to unseal her, which no other human seems to want. Naruto joins them for dinner, and when Naruto asks to go upstairs to bed, well, that's the only thing that Naruto really said. Naruto didn't talk at all at dinner. He didn't say much. Really, he didn't say anything. They tried to talk to him, but he would just respond quickly and stop the conversation. However, little did they know that when Naruto asked to go upstairs, 
he didn't, he wasn't planning on going to bed. He opened his window and jumped outside. Of course, closing it after him so they wouldn't notice. And he created a show, a clone, so again, no one would notice he's gone. Now then, he goes towards the forest. Why? He meets Black Zetsu. Kaguya told him that she left behind her will's manifestation as, well, not really human, but just in a material form thing. So, they meet. Black Zetsu explains how he's already working on unsealing Kaguya and kind of tricking the Akatsuki into doing what he wants. And although Madara thinks that she's in control, really Black Zetsu is pulling all the strings. Naruto likes what he's hearing and kind of wants to... Well, he wants to help, but... There's not much he can do right now. He needs to get stronger. And although he's pretty strong for his age, he's only about, let's say, Jonin power. Which, I mean, he's a bloody six-year-old, yeah? But anyways. So, Naruto. Now, we cut to... Let's say when Naruto's eight. Naruto has learned to kind of sense people's chakra. At least that's what he's told others. Minato supposedly trained Naruto to sense other people's chakra so he wouldn't bump into people. And even went as far as to test if Naruto had earth style, earth style nature release so that he could actually, similar to how Toph did it in Avatar The Last Airbender, sense people with the earth's vibration. Now all of that was of course a hoax because Naruto can see in the first place so it's kind of useless but Naruto still accepts extra training because why what and why not. I mean, he, training from the Hokage is always nice. So, they let Naruto into the academy because supposedly he can now see. Naruto enters the academy, and actually, with his little sister. Because she is a prodigy. Because she has gotten training from Jiraiya. And... Also, from Tsunade, because they did call Tsunade to heal Naruto, but once she arrived, it was already too late, and Naruto already woke up. But after she saw that the supposed child of prophecy was born, she stayed there to train her. So yeah, Kurui's getting trained by two Sanin and Kushina and Minato. Kind of OP, I know. But if you really think about it, Naruto's getting trained by literally Kaguya herself. So yeah, I think we'd know who to choose there. Anyways. People are kind of weirded out by Naruto because... Well, he can see, but without eyes, which people, I mean, that's a little sus, you know? But Neji and Sasuke like it because they just see that as strength. And although Naruto doesn't have his eyesight, supposedly, of course, um... He could be 
a good team member to have because he seems to have pretty good chakra control. And of course, because he has eyes look like the Byakugan, because Neji at first actually thought he had the Byakugan, which is kind of funny because he's actually blind. So, as I said, everybody thinks Naruto is blind, but through chakra sensing, he learned to see to, to see people. And so Naruto joined the academy, but also his little sister is there because she's a prodigy trained by two Sanin and Hokage. Neji and Sasuke are do you kind of like Naruto because not only is he pretty much of high status, you could say, being the Hokage's child, and Naruto Sasuke is, well, not an emo, you could say, because the Uchiha massacre hasn't happened. I'm not sure if it will happen. We'll have to see. Anyways, they both like, like Naruto because of his status and because of his strength, because he's pretty powerful. Well, he's even more powerful than they know, but what they know of, he's pretty powerful. But then, then comes a day at the academy where they need to spar. Now, usually Naruto's held out from sparring, but this time he really wanted to spar. So he told Iruko that he wants to spar. If you're wondering why they usually don't let Naruto spar, it's because, well, as I said, everybody thinks he's blind. And although he can sense people, they don't think his chakra control is good enough yet so he can actually fight whilst being blind. However, because Kiba doesn't have anyone else to spar with either, he then spars with Naruto. Everyone is a little excited, but the teachers are a little bit scared because they don't want to get in trouble with Minato having his son fight, or rather spar, with somebody else. But, oh boy. Kibo quickly brushes Naruto because he thinks that by quickly moving, he'll stop Naruto from being able to sense him. But all it takes is a single punch to the stomach, and Kiba falls backwards to the ground. With a single punch, Kiba gives up. Everybody's shocked. What? How could he even see me? I, I I was going way too fast for him. There's even some people that couldn't actually see Kiba. Because let's just say Kiba's actually not powerful, but he is a mediocre student. So he actually has some skills because in the original, I'm I I think in my opinion he was pretty lame. But anyways, Sasuke and Neji are super happy in their mind, and now really want to be Naruto's friends and have him as their teammate. For Naruto, of course, this was super easy, but. Anyways, Ruka lets Naruto win the match, and so the day at the academy is over. However, unlike everybody else, Naruto just goes to the forest. He barely goes home anymore. And there's even been some times where he's literally slept in the forest outside of the village. 
and they only came back for the academy. Nobody really knows where Naruto's going, and Kushina's a little concerned. Because ever since Naruto got beaten up and woke up again, he's been really distant to everyone. But there's always been one thing that's been the same. He always goes to the forest. Then, one day, while eating breakfast, Minato asks Naruto to join them for afternoon training with Kurui, Jiraiya, and Tsunade. Naruto agrees, but he's not too thrilled about it, if you, as you can imagine. But he goes there anyways, and so he learns that Kurui is trying to learn the Rasengan, but she wants to do something special with it. She's trying to do something similar to what Boruto does when he throws his Rasengan. But she's gonna have hers not only be throwable, but also explode. Yes. Yes, it's gonna explode. So, whilst practicing, because Naruto's kind of a chakra, and it, chakra control expert, that, of course, the Sanin and Minato don't really know about, but he still tries to give her tips subtly because he actually kind of likes Kuri. I mean, it is his sister after all. So Naruto goes over and touches her hand to show her something for the first time in a very long time. And from all the emotion that she got, her chakra because she was in the middle of doing the jutsu, and her focus shifted completely to Naruto. And then, the worst happened. Her dream then, become, then became a nightmare. The jutsu exploded right into her face. But more than that, it exploded in Naruto's face. And so... The Sanin, Minato, and Kushina saw an injured Naruto and a crying Karui. Which one did they go to? Of course they went to Karui. Because she is a child of prophecy, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> of course, this is what they believe. But anyways, they go, go, they go over there, and Tsunade immediately starts healing her. But Karui, well, her hand is her maybe broken, but Naruto is much worse off. Because the explosion hit him right in the face. Because she was basically pointing at him. The explosion left Naruto shocked. Because whilst it wouldn't have been such a big problem if he was prepared for it, that's the whole point. He wasn't prepared. He was trying to help her, but Little did he know he was gonna get. He was gonna have the jutsu explode in his face. He. His face was a whole mess. His nose was broken. His eyes. Well, though they were the new eyes that Kaguya got, basically, 
Naruto's eyes are basically like shoes at this point, where he gets a new some new ones every couple of years. That was a joke, alright? His new eyes are not broken as well, because obviously he had his eye, eyes open. Eyes open. Sorry about that. I mean, of course, who wouldn't have his eyes open while well, trying to teach your little sister something? So his face is a complete mess. He's knocked out cold, and he is, again, a bloody pulp. Where does he wake up to? Of course, he wakes up in a cloud-like place, but this time it's different. Not only is Kuruma there already, but... Also, he's actually laying on Kushi on sorry not Kushina Kaguya's hair because Kaguya's hair for some reason is not even trolling like five meters long and he's literally laying on it like it's a bed and it feels so soft and cuddly and warm it feels like what a true mother would feel like. And she starts healing Naruto. But for some reason, she has some trouble healing Naruto in his real body. She can still do it, especially with Kurama's help, but for some reason, it's a little harder than it usually would have been. And referring back to my eyes like shoe joke, yes, Naruto's gonna get brand new eyes from Kaguya, alright? Flame me in the comments all you want. He's getting new eyes. Yep, getting new eyes. This time, who would have guessed? Although they still look like the Byakugan, well, to everyone else, of course, this time he's getting the Sharingan from the Uchiha clan. Of course, this has much more potential than the Byakugan, even if the Byakugan is buffed. The Sharingan, of course, not only has the 1, 2, and 3 Tomoe, but it also has the Mangekyo and Eternal Mangekyo. And because fans wanted it, the ultimate eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. Now, he won't have it immediately, of course, because that'd just be way too OP. But he will get it at some point. But for now, we're still in this situation. Naruto is bleeding, unconscious. But of course, everyone's focus is on Karui. And they're trying to heal her. After she's good and she can actually walk again. And she's completely fine. When they look back to Naruto. Tsunari already used a lot of her chakra to heal Karui. Because she wanted a completely healed Karui. And didn't just want her to be fine. She genuinely gave it all she could, even if it wasn't a fatal wound. And so, Tsunade actually used most of his chakra, which means that she can't completely heal Naruto's wounds. She tries to, but she can't. So they have to bring Naruto to the hospital because they, because in this storyline, Kurui is the only one that Tsunade actually taught her medical jutsu. So, like, Sakura didn't yet, at least, get Tsunade's healing powers, or training, rather. And Kurui is low on chakra from training, so nobody can heal him. That's right there and then. So they first have to go to the hospital, which, of course, won't take long, because Minato's fine, Raiji. 
But there, even at the hospital, it takes a while because before the doctors can get to Naruto. And so they heal him as much as they can, but again, even they can't heal all of Naruto's wounds. At this point, it's even looking worse than the time Naruto was beaten up when he was six. Now, Kaguya goes more into detail into the Sharingan for Naruto, so that he can get stronger because Naruto has, well, Naruto has more potential than Kaguya did, because whilst Kaguya is daughter of a nobleman, Ishiki is royalty. And we all know royalty, they have privileges, because why the hell not? And so they have extra Kekke Genkai, and they're extra powerful, and they're extra extra extra, and so... Yeah, Naruto is actually has more potential than an average Otsutsuki. Now, Naruto wakes up, but again, no one's there. They all went to the Namikaze house because well, Naruto was unconscious for a few hours, and they actually didn't want to wait there. Yes, I'm sorry. Naruto's childhood won't be the best, alright? It won't be the greatest. I kind of need it for better plot. And it would actually make sense, in my opinion. Now, Kaguya actually had to up her genjutsu on Naruto. Because not only were his eyes, like cut and bruised from before to the point where he couldn't see but now they're they're like completely broken like absolutely destroyed so without saying a word naruto goes to the forest but this time, after being with Zetsu for about half an hour, he sees a beautiful young girl arrive. She walks up next to him and asks, Are you Naruto Namikaze? Yes, that's me. Hello, Lord Naruto. Lord Naruto? What do you mean by that? Well, you must know, of course. You're a Tsutsuki royalty. Wait. Does, does that mean you're... Yes. I am an Otsutsuki, just like you. But I... Well, I wouldn't consider myself just like you. Because you, of course, you're royalty. But I'm here to... Not look after you, but I'm here to help you in any way I can. Because I have been trained for this my entire life. We then cut back to after Ishiki lost contact with Kaguya on Earth. They were planning on making 
on doing a rescue mission to look what happened to Kaguya and maybe unseal her if she got sealed because that's one of the only ways to actually, well, at least temporarily stop Kaguya in her tracks because she is a little special, alright? I won't say it yet, but I'm for now I'm just gonna say she's a little special of Natsuki. So then Ishiki got a better idea. Because Kaguya was able to send a message to the Otsutsuki home planet. She sent it straight to Ishiki. And she said, actually, I won't say what she said, but Ishiki's response to that was choosing one person that's about Naruto's age. And that person would not only help Naruto look out for him, serve him, and care for him. But that person would also help to bring Kaguya back, and it could be a potential mate for Naruto to keep the royal bloodline going. Because let's just say Otsutsuki's had a lot of arranged marriages. Especially in the noble slash royal sector of the planet, let's say. And this girl, she was the pr most promising of her age. Um, disclaimer, although they are super young, well, eight years old, um, on the Tsutsuki home planet, there's something similar. Well, the, the, there's something similar to how Kaguya used her time-bending powers. There's a similar room to that. Like, there, like there is in Dragon Ball. And there, again, one day equals one year. So this girl really had a lot of practicing and a lot. A lot of time to train and she trained a lot she was by far the strongest in her age group and even beat people above her age and she was by far the prettiest out of all of them and actually came from a noble family that was good friends with Ishiki and so it was decided that she would be sent to planet Earth to not only help and serve Naruto and Kaguya, but also to be a potential mate, if Naruto so chooses to. Because I'm gonna say that Ishiki is nice and gives Naruto a choice with his marriage, because he doesn't like to force his son. We cut back to this girl, which I will let you guys name. Totally not because I don't have a name for her, alright? I'll let you guys choose the name for her. And so, she bows down and actually goes on one knee and says, I pledge my allegiance to you, Lord Naruto. As I explained, a weird girl comes and she introduces herself as an Otsutsuki, a nobleman's daughter that was sent there to protect Naruto and Kaguya and bring them back to their home planet. So now we cut back to the present time, where Shiru, 
Shiro, which is her name, Shiro Tsutsuki, she's still on her knee bowing to Naruto as he is well, the son of Ishiki, the prince royalty. She explains some more about their home planet, which I'm just gonna say, kind of has sectors, where, like, the nobles, so there's the castle from royalty, like, the big mansion, then surrounding it lives, live the rich people and nobles, and then on the outside, there are the common people. So, that's basically the hierarchy on the Utsutsuki home planet. And most Utsutsukis get their money by conquering planets. Yep, it's a pretty weird way to get money, but anyways, I ain't gonna question it. Anyways, once she's done explaining, of course, Naruto tells her that she does need to bow since here on Earth, he's nothing but a normal well, technically human, but he's just a normal person. And he explains some more about how Kaguya was sealed by her half-human children. And the Ten Tails was split into Nine-Tailed Beasts, which are scattered around. And they're gonna need those to collect them to unseal Kaguya from the moon. Because I'm just gonna say that that's what they need to do. However, Naruto, funny enough, is actually a Jinchuriki of one of the tailed beasts. So they already have the strongest of them, the cotton, the nine tails, Kurama. Already they have him because Naruto is the Jinchuriki. Then Shiro gets an idea, and without no telling Naruto what she's about to do, and without waving any hand seals because she's not Tsutsuki, she closes her eyes, sits down on the grass, and suddenly neither she nor Naruto are still in the real world. Well, their bodies are, but now they're both kind of stuck in Naruto's mindscape, where in front of them, they see Kaguya and Kurama. Again, Shiru bows and goes on one knee, as that's what everybody, even the nobles and friends of royalty, still do. Because, well, royalty is the highest, the highest class of people, and are basically almost like gods to the Otsutsukis. And Kaguya just smiles as she hasn't seen any Otsutsuki, well, true Otsutsuki, except for her son, in over 1,000 years. So she's very happy to see someone, especially such a beautiful young girl. All Kaguya says is, I approve. A approve? Approve of what? Naruto asks. Well, of your engagement, of course. An, an engagement? But, Mom, I'm only eight. So what? You can never start too early. Kaguya smiled at him. And so did Shiro. He started blushing. blushing. You're very... Very beautiful girl. 
And please, you don't need to bow to me. Just like Naruto, nobody knows who we truly are. So, we're no royalty here on Earth, Hagia explains. And as Naruto already explained, first we need to unseal me before we can go anywhere. So that should be your first priority. You should you should nest yourself into the hidden leaf village, kind of like Naruto, as a human orphan. And never show your true colors. All right, Lady Kaguya. Shiro accepted her offer. As whatever the royals say is law. For a long afternoon, it's finally nighttime. Nobody has checked in on Naruto, so nobody actually knows that he was gone. So he just goes into his home and goes to bed. Whilst Shiro goes to the Hokage's office, of course, it's Minato in there, and then tells him that she's an orphan and that she wants a place to stay, preferably in the Hinali village, because her parents were killed. That's what she's saying. Of course, that's not true, but... So, all right then. Do you want to live in the orphanage like the other kids? No. I want to, I want to have my own home. She responded. All right then, fine. Do you have any interest in becoming a Konoichi? Konoichi? Yes. Yes, yes, I do. Shiro isn't quite sure what all of this means, but Kaguya Naruto explains some things to her so that she could actually understand people. Since words like Konoichi don't mean much to her, but yeah, they had to explain it. So, on the condition that she will become a Konoichi someday, she gets enough money to rent her own apartment. On the next day, she goes to the academy, along with, of course, Naruto and Kurui, but they're of course going separately as they don't want to raise any suspicion, especially not on the first day. So, everybody settles in class, Iruka comes in, and he says, Class, today we have a new girl joining us. All the boys are interested, and into the room comes a beautiful young girl with silvery hair and white eyes, similar to the Hyuga. Wow, all the boys say at the same time. Naruto, of course, expected her, but that's also the reason why he's sitting alone today. Usually he sits with some friends, but he's sitting alone. Well, actually, he used to sit with friends. Now he almost always sits alone. Because, well, after hearing what happened to Kaguya because of all the humans and her own sons, which were half humans, and how the villagers treated him, he doesn't trust humans anymore. Except for a few one 
like the Namikaze family. So then, where would you like to sit? Uruka asked. I would love to sit beside Naruto, please. Beside Naruto, huh? Alright then. Naruto, please scooch to the side so Shira could sit there. Alright then. All the boys are looking at him a little jealous. Even Sasuke, because she was truly beautiful. Their, their lessons go, and their day at the academy passes, and at this point we're going to see a time skip. Time skip of... Four years, and when they're twelve, and some things that happened over this time is, of course, without anyone knowing, Naruto fully mastered his three tomi Sharingan, and even his Mangekyo and Eternal Mangekyo, not Ultimate, just yet, just yet, and also Shiro has been helping a lot with some Otsutsuki abilities and Kake Genkai, as Kaguya can train Naruto, but it's easier to do it in real life with a real person that's sitting right in front of him, or standing, depending on the, well, ability. So Shiro also helped Naruto train, and they both got stronger, but mainly Naruto, the Shiro is, as I said, already an elite of her age. They also have gotten into a relationship, as Shiro likes Naruto, and who would have guessed, Naruto likes Shiro. And Kaguya is also happy. Because she found out Shiro is the daughter of a friend of Ishiki. So she so Kaguya also likes Shiro, but she would have liked her anyways. After everybody being mad, and I really do mean everybody, even the girls being mad at Naruto for getting the most gorgeous girl at the academy and getting into a relationship with her. Um, we now cut to the day of the passing exams. We're about half the class is already gone. And then it's Shiro's turn. Now, of course, she does only what's needed and aces her exams, all of them, also with the written test. And then the rest goes, and Naruto is last. He's last on the list, and... People are expecting things from it. But they're not really sure what to expect, because they know he's pretty strong, but... Again, Naruto's pretty weird, so they're not sure what he's gonna do. But, of course, not quite like Shiro, because he actually goes overboard and makes about 20 Shadow Clones. Or actually, one of you guys suggested Otsutsuki style shadow clones. He, of course, passes. But, well, he goes overboard, as I said. So they're both Genin now. And, well, most everybody from the original series is Genin. Or Genin. And even Karui, although she's two years younger than everybody else. 
but everybody still likes her, mostly because she's regarded as child of prophecy, Hokage's child, and trained by two legendary Sonin, and she seems like a very nice person. Naruto has nothing against her, but he doesn't really see her as his own sister. So he kind of likes her, but he has a much closer relationship to Shiro. And of course, Kaguya. Naruto has also gotten much closer to Black Zetsu over the years, and Black Zetsu and him are now basically like brothers, Black Zetsu of course being the older one. So those so Shiro, Naruto, Black Zetsu, and Kaguya are basically like a big family now. Well, it's not that big, but anyways. And the Hyuga, especially Hiyashi, are now making a little stress because they think, well, I mean, they know, Shiro has the, the Byakugan, so she's part of the Hyuga clan because she actually never told anyone what clan she's from. She didn't say anything, just to be sure, because although no humans really knew about the Tsutsuki clan, they just wanted to be sure. So nobody knows what her real name is. Because she said she, she actually doesn't know. So nobody knows. But because she has the Byakugan, now he actually wants her to be in the Hyuga compound. Now, they're holding a meeting with all the, with the village elders, Minato, Hiruzen, and all the clan heads, well, the important clan heads, like the Aburame clan, the Inazuka clan, the Chia clan, the Hyuga clan, and some others. So they requested for Shira to come, but little do they know, she's not alone. She's never alone. Naruto has certain markers on him, on her that allow him to teleport right next to her. I think you guys know which one I'm talking about. Similar, they're, they're similar to the Hiraishin, also known as the Flying Raijin. So they ask her, do you have the Byakugan? She says yes. Are you a Hyuga? She says, I don't know. Okay, well, do you want to join the Hyuga compound? She says no. Why not? If you have the Byakugan, then you must be a Hyuga. So you're going to join the Hyuga compound. Mostly Hi Hiyashi just wants her because she's pretty strong and he a she aces all of her tests and can even compete with Neji. I won't join the Hyuga compound. And then the other clans also start joining in on the conversation. Because it'd be easier to have her join the Hyuga compound than stay as an orphan. But then, when Shiro puts in just the littlest bit of chakra onto her seal, onto her mark. They all see a boy with a mask on, silver hair, and red Sharingan eyes blazing hot. 
it reminds them kind of of Itachi, but more than that, of Kakashi. Silver white hair, Sharingan th through a, a mask similar to what the Anbu wear. That, that kid looks like Kakashi. But of course, we all know it's Naruto. Naruto releases some of his bloodlust. And all of them, everybody, gets scared. Even Minato and Hiruzen are shocked. As already, even though it's only a fraction of Naruto's bloodlust and chakra, that's already Jonin, high Jonin power. You heard her. She said no. Naruto yelled out. Uh, nobody knew what to say. That's Joni level of strength. That 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 could rival Kakashi even. But nobody know knew who was under the mask. But some suspected Naruto, as no one else except for Kakashi maybe. And Chiro had such silvery white hair. Well, and I guess Jiraiya, maybe. But not a young kid. Who are you? And what are you doing here? Minato's asked. It's none of your business. I'm here to tell you that Shiro won't be joining the Hyuga clan. That's all. You don't have any right to disrespect me as your Hokage, Minato yelled out. Hokage? Dear Hokage, let me tell you. If you put a hand on Shiro, I will personally make it my mission to kill you and hunt you down for the rest of my life. Minato doesn't know what to think as he has gotten a lot of threats like these before, but especially in his war days, the third shinobi war. As he was basically the person who won that war alone. But this time it seemed different. This kid really seemed powerful. And Minato knew that this person was holding back. There was much more to him. And he had the Sharingan. Blazing with a three to Moe. Naruto, who was behind the mask, then took that mask off, revealing his face. N Naruto? But how could it be? You're. You were blind. Blind? I've never been blind a day in my life. Thanks to Kurama and Kaguya, I had new eyes made for me. Kinda like shoes. Sorry, that was my joke. Anyways. And so, not only did I unlock the Byakugan with more power than even Hiyashi, but also the Sharingan. Who's... Wait a minute, did you say Kurama? As I'm just gonna say, Minato from Kushina kind of found out Kurama's name, but that's, that, 
That's the nine-tailed fox. You talk to him? Of course I talk to him. He's inside of me after all. You sealed him inside of me. Why would I not talk to him? Don't you know where I go when I'm unconscious? Or sleeping? I have always talked to him. And he was my only real friend. However, Kaguya, my true mother, showed me what family really is like. F family? Mother? But Kushina is your one and only mother. No, you're wrong about that, Minato. Although, yes, you and Kushina are my human parents. Well, let me just put it this way. I'm not only a human. And with those words, Naruto grabbed Shiro's hand and teleported away. We cut to the next morning where Naruto slept over at Shiro's house. Yes, yes he did. All right, don't get any ideas. Relax. They're just kids. Anyways. <clears throat> they then casually go over to the academy again, as today, right after finishing their Genin exams and becoming a Genin, of course the next part is getting their Chunin team leaders. Now, the events from yesterday are only secret to clan members, of course, everybody there, and basically that's it. The two Hokage, Hiruzen and Minato, the clan members, and some Anbu who were listening on the, on the conversation, but really that's it. It hadn't been made public as it would rage, it would make people rage. It would, I mean, a 12 year old Genin having a Byakugan and a Sharingan and such power that even scared all of the clan leaders that were all present in one room. If he could do that at 12 years old, just imagine what he could do in his prime time. But Naruto didn't think of much of it, and if that would turn out to be a problem, he could use a special genjutsu on people, which you might know as the Kodo Amatsu Kami. Yes, sir. Because he, of course, knows about the Mangekyo Sharingan, because Kaguya has told him about it, as well as Zetsu, who, of course, manip manipulated a lot of Uchiha's over the years, so he knows what the ability can do. And Naruto is destined to soon get the Mangekyo Sharingan. And then he can just switch his eyes with Shiro to get the EMS. Actually, I think I already gave Naruto the Mangekyo. Okay, now I don't know. Please write it down in the comments. Uh, I'm actually not sure right now.
But anyways, continuing on. So Naruto and Shiro arrive, holding hands, of course. Everybody looking at them jealous. Of course, mostly the boys, especially Kiba. As Kiba will not really have a crush on Hinata as much, but more on Shiro. Shiro. Basically, every other boys does too. So then Iruka comes in, of course, not knowing about the incident that occurred yesterday evening. So for him, it's just a normal day with Naruto and Shiro in his classroom. He then announces the teams, and in this story, in this timeline, I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to say it's Naruto Zamaki. Sorry, Naruto Namikaze Shiro, which again nobody knows her last name, and. Karui Namikaze with the team captain as Kakashi Hatake. However, your team is special because it has Minato, the fourth Hokage's wife, aka Kushina Uzumaki. The red hot habanero of the hidden leaf village as a second Jonin leader. Kushina volunteered mostly because well, I mean it's there it's both of their children that are in that team, so it's pretty obvious why. But also she wanted to get a closer connection to Naruto as she actually knows about what happened yesterday. Because, I mean, she's Minato's wife, right? Anyways, of course, Kushina arrives first. But guess who doesn't show up? It's, of course, Kakashi Hatake, the legend. So... Team 7, including Kushina, waits there for two hours straight until Kashi Hatake arrives. No prank is pulled on him because everybody in that team is mature, including Haruli, even though she's only 10. Where Kakashi can even say hi. Of course, he gets hit by Kushina on the head. They have their little funny interaction, which we all love. But, as I'm bad at making beautiful scenes, I will not tackle that. So, you can just imagine Kushina. Is lecturing Kakashi. Then Kushina tells everyone to meet on the roof, and Naruto and Shiro are the first ones there, which immediately teleported there with Otsutsuki style teleportation technique, which the Otsutsukis don't need a rainy Sharingan to teleport. Only humans do. Well, I guess other species as well, but not Otsutsukis. Second is, of course, both Kakashi and Kushina, and then it's Karui. Once Karui arrived on the roof, which actually didn't take too long, 
Kakashi asks everyone about their likes, dislikes, and goals. He then demonstrates and says, my name is Kakashi Hatake. I don't really have many likes. My dislikes are none of your business. And my goals are none of your business either. Now it's your turn. Again, he gets hit on the head by Kushino. I'll do a good example for you guys. My name is Kushina Uzumaki. I love my family. And that that Naruto scowled. My dislikes. I don't really have any dislikes. And my goal is to be a happy family forever. Again, Naruto doesn't look too pleased about that statement. And it's Mito's turn. Sorry, not Mito. Kurui. Sorry, I got confused. Don't worry. No Mito there. It's Kurui. Kurui says, My name is Kurui Namikaze. I... Love my family as well. And I love my big bro. Of course, referring to Naruto. Because they actually still kept an okay bond. Because Naruto doesn't mind having a small sister. However, he's not a big fan of his parents. Especially Kushina seems to bother him. Then, she says, my dislikes are bullies, and my goal is to become the first female Hokage, and to fulfill the prophecy that I was destined to fulfill. Kushina looks proud, and Kakashi, well, he looks a little happy, as that is supposedly the child of prophecy. But, well, boy, they're gonna get shocked. Then it's Shira's turn. She says, I don't have any likes, but I love Naruto. I don't have any dislikes, but I dislike humans. And I don't have any goals, except to be with Naruto forever, and to serve Lady Kaguya. Kakashi is a little, well, a little shocked at this. But anyways... Continuing on, now it's Naruto's turn. And in the coldest tone ever, Naruto just says, Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And then when he's asked to by Kushino, he just responds with, I don't like to give out any information about myself. Props to Naruto right there. Anyways. They do some deranked missions, but mostly it's just Kurui. Because she seems to enjoy it. And I guess Shiro kind of has fun talking to Karui, and Karui knows that Shiro and Naruto are dating, but she doesn't really care, and as a 10 year old she doesn't really have much knowledge about relationships, so yeah, it doesn't mean much to her. 
But anyways, Karui then requests a hard mission, which Minato accepts and gives them the C-rank mission. Really, it should be way too easy because they have Kushina and Kakashi, but whatever. They're just going to hold back because they want their Genin to actually do something. That's the whole point of their team. So then, Naruto spots the lake and puts the actual people, the demon brothers, in the lake into such a strong genjutsu with his Sharingan that they literally die from it because they were tortured for 10, for 10 days straight. You know how Kakashi was, like, tortured in his Genjutsu world for 27 hours? Yeah, the, they were tortured three times that long. And they mentally couldn't handle it, and they died from it. And all Kakashi noticed was, oh, there's people, and now they're gone two seconds later. Because Naruto's Genjutsu didn't take long to completely... Well, do the work that it's supposed to. Then on the way, when Zabuza attacks, Shiro just gets him with a similar... Well, with a jutsu that's similar to Shikamaru Nara's Shadow Possession Jutsu. Utsutsuki-style Shadow Possession. Just that, again, it's much stronger, and it has much more of an area effect and much longer range. And so, Zabuza was then stuck in one place, and Naruto absolutely smacked him around. Absolutely smacked him around. So then he died. Haku couldn't interfere. Zabuza died. Haku then tried to throw Senbon at Naruto, but Shiro wasn't having it. She was gonna protect her. Naruto -ko. The best way she could. And so, again, she did some killing as well. And she killed Haku. Yeah. Kakashi and... Mrs. Uzumaki didn't have to do nothing. And neither did Kuri. Naruto and Shiro did all the work. So then they built the bridge. Naruto and Shiro go on some dates. Because they don't need no training from Kakashi. Because they already know tree walking. And actually, so does Kurui, because she's a prodigy, trained by Kusani Nana Hokage. So, they just take the time for Kushina to teach some, well, some Uzumaki seals to her. But then, they get an idea. As they knew that Naruto had the Sharingan, the three Tomoe. As Naruto told them. But. What if. What if in this what if. Yes it's a double what if. What if in this what if. Kakashi. Could teach Naruto. About the Sharingan. Now of course for Naruto this. It was just useless, kind of like Sakura. But Kakashi thought it was a good idea, so he went over to Naruto. And he asked him if Naruto needed some training with Sharingan. Naruto said no. And Kakashi then tried to put Naruto under a Genjutsu. But it completely failed. As Naruto brushed it off and put Kakashi 
under a similar genjutsu as Itachi did, and so Kakashi was then knocked out cold, unconscious. Don't worry, he's not dead. Because our man Kakashi the legend doesn't die so easily. Even if he's facing an Otsutsuyi prince. Gato does his entrance. Naruto again kills all the... Well, the henchmen. And then kills Gato. And it's called the Great Naruto Bridge because he did all the work and Jonin are useless. Again, kind of like Sakura. Sorry for all the reference, by the way. I'm having a lot of fun with this. But anyways, the Chunin exams now begin. This time, because Naruto and Shiro, Sh Shiro aren't in the village, they won't have that same interaction that they did with Gara's team when they bullied Konohamaru. Well, not bullied, but picked on him. Then, after that, Kakashi and Kushina tell them about the Chunin exams. Of course, they were re all three of them were recommended because they were the best well, the best students in the academy, and all three of them were basically already tuning level and higher. Well, at least that's what they thought, but really they're all Joni level and higher, even Karui. Although she's not even close to as strong as Naruto or Shiro. And yes, at the moment, Shiro is still stronger than Naruto. Because she trained in a place similar to the hyperbolic time chamber, as we Naruto, eh, I mean, as we Dragon Ball fans know out there. So she had a lot more training than Naruto, and she was trained by Atsutsuki in their respective Kekigenkai, so she is very knowledgeable about that kind of stuff, and so that's why she's teaching Naruto. However, they still get accepted, and of course, recommended to participate in the Junin exams. So, they're go oh, now I'm gonna skip to the first exams of the Junin exams. They do their little cheating, but because Naruto and Shiro are very knowledgeable and smart they can actually answer all questions correctly and this time in the story Karui has that same speech that Naruto had in the original canon that she won't give up and she will become Hokage because as I said that's her dream she wants to be the first Hokage so this time it's her dream, not Naruto's. So, now moving on to the second round of the Chunin exams. And by the way, um, I won't be focusing much on the original Team 7, meaning Sakura and Sasuke. I mean, Sakura, it's pretty obvious why. Sasuke, well, you'll see. Anyways, now moving on to the forest of death. The forest of death. Again, Anko makes her little entrance, but doesn't throw no kunai. They all head over to the Forest of Death, where of course Orchimaru is again cosplaying a Genin, because why not? He's a weirdo. So, this time, the Genin that Orchimaru wants to use 
is actually Kurui. Now, he did this because, well, as I say a lot, she has a lot of training from very powerful shinobi, and supposedly, she's the child of prophecy. And already now, at the young age of 12, actually no, 10, because she's younger than Naruto, she is already tuning to Joni level. However, because it might not be as easy as it was with Sh Sasuke in the original, Orochimaru's second backup plan is Sasuke again, because he has the Sharingan, because it's not made public that Naruto also has the Sharingan. Because Urchimaru knows that the Sharingan is way better than the Byakugan, so he's not even going to try to go for a Hyuga, because Sharingan for the win, especially Mangekyo. So then, Team 7 gets attacked, but this time, Naruto is there because he doesn't need to pee. And in beforehand, without anybody noticing, except for Shiro, she, uh, he sent out clones, a Tsutsuki-style shadow clones of his own, to scout the area, get them some scrolls so they don't need to do anything, and also look out for people who might try to want to sneak up at them. However, Orochimaru still comes through, because he's a snake, literally. Orochimaru does his thing, and whilst Kuri is shocked because she she's heard stories from Jiraiya and Tsunade about Orochimaru, the third Sanian. She had never met him before, of course not. Why would she? And this time he was releasing even more bloodlust than in the canon series. But Shiro and Naruto seem to be unfazed. And Naruto looked pissed. He was not gonna have this psychopath use his do his little sister's body. He ain't having it. Because as I said, even though he doesn't really like his pa his, uh, his parents, Minato and Kushina, he still feels a bond with his little sister because he wants to protect her. So he ain't gonna have a legendary shinobi using her as his tool. So Naruto uses a similar technique to how Tsunade does it, pumps Chakra into his fist, and absolutely smashes Urchimaru away. Don't get the wrong idea. So Urchimaru gets absolutely blasted off through dozens of trees. And there's actually a little bit of an explosion just because of the sheer force that that punch had. And Naruto actually did release some of Kyuubi's chakra because he was furious. And Shiro could sense that because they kind of have a connection in their mindscape because they always hang out and they kind of give each other chakra. Which in the Otsutsuki kind of religion slash culture represents a bond like marriage or engagement. So they can also talk and connect in their mindscape. Yeah, I know it's pretty cool and pretty useful. Would have been pretty cool for Team 7, so that's why I'm adding it. Then Shiro heals Karui. Because there had act because Urchimaru actually did put a curse mark on her, 
before Naruto could react. Because, I mean, Naruto is way too OP, so I'll need to make that villain a little stronger. So I'm gonna say, that Orochimaru was actually just his own, well, he used himself as a distraction. So basically, he used a shadow clone to have his shadow clone be the distraction. Where actually, he was the distraction, but his shadow clone, which completely suppressed his chakra, went from behind and put a curse mark on Karui, knocking her out. And then, only after that, Naruto punched Orochimaru in his face. So she was, of course, helping her and healing her, because not only is, is Karui her teammate, but also through Naruto's bond with her and love for her, she also kind of likes Karui now. She's pretty much the only human that Shiro can tolerate. So... Then... Naruto does something... Which... Will forever... Be unknown to anybody. Or will it? He puts his hand on Karui's neck. And with one swift motion, he puts a curse. Sorry, not a curse. A seal. On the curse mark. So then, he transfers the curse mark from her body, Kuri's body, to his own. Meaning that Kuri doesn't have a curse mark anymore, but now Naruto does. So yeah, we'll have a Naruto curse mark. Or will we? Because Naruto actually did this knowing that the curse mark is something not to be happy about. However, he knew that with his Utsutsuki genetics, he could not only suppress it and stop it from hurting, but he could also use it to make him even more powerful without having to be Urchimaru's lackey. Because he was able to put a seal on his pain. So Naruto literally can't feel pain. Otsutsukis usually do this as children and that's why a lot of them don't feel that many feel that many emotions or well at least come off to not feel a lot of emotions but deep inside they actually do however sometimes the pain seal which is often necessary for them to be able to conquer worlds and expand their empire it's, it sometimes also suppresses their feelings. But Naruto's royalty. He ain't having none of the nerfs. He's having all the buffs, no nerfs. So he puts a pain seal on himself. And he actually has for some time now. But with Kaguya's help and, and his love for Shiro, he was able to have his emotions break through the seal without feeling any pain whatsoever. 
So long story short, Naruto has the curse mark, Kuri doesn't. They then carry her unconscious body to the tower, where they then pass, because Naruto's clones will oust everything else was happening, got the remaining scrolls, and actually got way too many, so they just left five scrolls on the floor. Because why the hell not? Naruto, with Kuri's unconscious body in his hands, went to the tower, went to Minato, who was, stand who was in the lounge with all the other Jonin, bust the door open, put Kuri into, into Minato's hands, and disappeared just as quickly as he appeared. Then in the last round of the Chunin exam, well, sorry, not the finals, the pl preliminaries between the second and finals, between the second round and the last round, there are, of course, the preliminary rounds, which they're all gonna be the same until it's Shiro versus Neji. Now I did this for a very special reason. Because not only Hiyashi has kind of started to develop a jealousy for well, for Shiro, but also Neji and some other clan members of the Hyuga clan. Because Neji was infuriated by the fact that such a girl could use the Byakugan like that, but he also had a crush on her. Yeah. Neji could feel emotions. I'm shocked too, not gonna lie. Anyways, he was he was al almost as ready to punch her in the face as he was during the Hinata fight. But oh buddy, she was not gonna have that happen. Without even giving him a chance, she absolutely destroyed him leaving him nothing more than a bloody pulp, similar to how Tenten looked after the Tamari fight. Yeah, not very good. Then, it's Karui versus... Karui versus Hinata. Karui versus Hinata. This is an interesting fight, but not really since... Hinata isn't that strong yet, but Karui is very strong. Very strong. So, she wins, no doubt about it. Naruto, no matter who he is against, he'd win. However, this is special, because I actually haven't told you guys this before. But actually, there was every single Jinshuriki in the Chunin exams. This was to promote, to promote peace in all five villages. And so, every Jinshuriki was supposed to be present even if they're not Genin participating. However, most of them were. Like Fu, Naruto, Garo. Yeah. Anyways, Naruto goes against Fu. 
No. Screw that. Naruto goes against Gara. Now, Gara is just as psycho as in the original. Alright? Just as psycho. However, Naruto is confident. And, in my opinion, there's no doubt about it. Naruto will crush this fight. Yes, Gara has ultimate defense. Yes, Gara has good defense. But Naruto is on a completely different level. And then, Naruto does something unheard of. He uses a time-bending jutsu on himself. And then a silence or a jutsu. So that nobody could hear what he's saying. And surround himself by stone. And then inside of that, he did something unimaginable. Forbidden Jutsu, 8 inner gates technique. First gate, open. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Eighth gate of death, open. Naruto opened all eight gates, but this wasn't gonna kill him. He was an Otsutsuki, and he had Kurama inside of him. Which means his regenerations was pretty much like the one of a ten-tailed Jinchuriki. Maybe even greater. Because as I said, he also has... He also got gifted some of Kaguya and Shiro's chakra, again increasing his regen regeneration. So, Naruto goes eight gates, but he takes it a step even further. Or does he? We won't know. But he won't do it for this fight. I'll save that for the finals. However, he now hides the aura around him from the 8th gift of death. Drops all the jutsus. So now everybody can see him in his might. With 8 gates open, it only takes one hit to blast Gara completely against the wall and even smashes his skull open. Don't worry, Gara won't die, but he seriously needs medical attention. And his sand? His sand was basically air to Naruto. It was practically non-existent. However, now comes the one month training arc. So the one month training arc shouldn't be a surprise. Naruto and Shiro train together with Kaguya and Black Zetsu. Especially Naruto still needs to learn things, especially about his Keke Genkai. And I also saw one comment about the Rinnegan, and he, he is very close to unlocking the Rinnegan. But first, he was told that he should master his Byakugan and Sharingan first. And... He actually has the Mangekyo and the Eternal Mangekyo at this point. And is on the verge of unlocking the ultimate Mangekyo. Sorry, the ultimate Eternal Mangekyo, Sharingan. Which, for the sake of the series, I will make even more 
ultimate. However, for now, they're training. And I'm going to time skip until the final round of the junior exams. Oh yeah, and Karui, she's training with the two Sanin. And occasionally me, Minotaur. Then they all gather for the finals. Karui is first up against Fu. I'm gonna say Karui is against Fu. Now, Fu's not a weak fighter. However, again, she can't compete with Karui. Karui at this point is about Jonin level. Maybe even high Jonin. So she's definitely very powerful. So yeah, she wins this one. Not that difficult, although Fu does put up a fight, especially with her Biju powers and immense chakra. Then, we see a lot of fights that I'm not going to cover right now because they're not as interesting. However, then comes the last fight of the finals. Well, of the first round of the finals. So it's... <laughs> it's the last fight of the first bracket of the finals of the junior exams, if that makes sense. And that fight is Naruto versus Shiro. Now, initially, the proctors weren't going to make, at least were going to try not to make matches where team members are fighting each other. However, Minato did it anyways, because why the hell not? I mean, really, he's Minato. But anyways, they both get in their fighting position. But at first, they don't want to fight. Because they've grown to love each other more than anything. And especially Naruto, but also Shira, because Shira is pretty much part of Naruto's family now. And what I mean by that is that, well, she knew her parents and she knows her family on the Otsutsuki planet, but Kaguya, Black Zetsu, and Naruto are so kind to her, and they're basically her new family now. Especially Naruto, who is basically engaged to her, unofficially, of course. So, with one found kiss, they both agree to power up and give it the best they got without hurting each other, of course. And they're going to try not to hurt too many people around them because, well, they don't need to right now. So, Naruto's first move is literally going underground. He stomps his foot on the floor and vanishes, only to appear five meters underground. Don't worry, he's surviving there because why the hell not? He's a Notsutsuki. Alright, plot armor, deal with it. He there again does the eight gates technique because he knows that he will need it. However, he has gotten an additional boost to it. Because you see, like any other jutsu, whilst the eight gates technique is special but it was still it was still made by the otsutsukis at first and they of course have a better control of it and not only do they have the ten the the eight inner gates but 
they actually have two more hidden gates. And so, after opening the eighth gate of death, which ironically does not kill him because he is Natsutsuki and has immense reincarnation, Naruto then opens the ninth door of secrecy. Yep, that's the name it's given. Ninth gate of secrecy. Because, who would have guessed, it's a secret gate that only Otsutsukis know about. And often, it's only used by royalty. Because it represents a noble status. So, simple Otsutsukis won't even be able to use this technique without, well, hurting themselves. Kind of like when um, my guy punched Madara but broke his own bones during the punch. So, normal people, well, normal Tsutsugis, don't you really use it, but Naruto's special, so. Anyways, however, Shiro knows that Naruto is powering up, so she does the same. She locks herself in a water prison, but of course she's not going to drown in there. It's just so nobody else can see from the outside what she's doing in there. And I won't tell you, because nobody can see it. Not even the narrator, which is me. So then Naruto jumps up, cracking half the floor, because he came from underneath the floor. Logical. So he breaks some of the floor, and jumps 10 meters high and then when he lands on the ground they both get ready to fight shiro is making the first move however naruto is so fast at this point that not even minato can even see his movements they're way too fast to see. Shiro and Naruto are on a completely different level. They, at this point, outshine Madara, Hashirama, Minato, almost any human. The only person who could maybe, just maybe, actually be on their level is maybe eight gates sky and of course the ten toes and shirkies like obito or madara so in their battle you could imagine it kind of like a dragon ball super battle where they're fighting in one place but the next moment after you blink they're in a completely different place. They're so fast that when they when they move, it looks like they're teleporting because they're too fast for the human eye to to see. Of course, Black Zetsu is watching and he's having a blast because he can't. He's seeing all the Kage's faces and the people's faces, and it is hilarious to see for him. But then, they both start powering down for some reason. And they, again, they both kiss each other. So, to everyone's surprise, and even to mine, to be honest, it's a draw. They both give up. They both use Shadow Possession Jutsus on each other and draw. Of course, this was only a show because from the beginning, they knew that they weren't going to fight each other all out. They would never harm each other. And they were going to draw either way, no matter what happened. 
because Naruto was going to give up. He wouldn't want to hurt Shiro, and she didn't want to do the same for Naruto. So they both gave up, but willingly. Then after that, no more important fights, Bakuri wins the actual tournament. However, right as the last fight ends in Karui's win, and her win for the entire tournament, snakes start filling the entire stadium. Of course, this is Mr. Legendary Slanian himself, Orichimaru. Orichimaru is really pissed. He kind of went psycho mode because Amir Genin was able to punch him once. Like it was one punch, man. Like, this is Naruto, not one punch, man. He got absolutely smashed out of the way. Don't take that out of context. I saw one of you guys did that. Don't do that. Anyways, he was really angry and kind of going crazy. So he was out for Naruto to get his body as a revenge. However, once he walked up in the stadium, because his plan, twisted plan, was to go and capture Karui again, but he knew that he was gonna he was gonna try to hold off Minato with the sound four, but also with a similar prison jutsu that they that the sound four used to keep off Minato from rescuing Karui, so then he would trigger Naruto to come. However, as that happened, and Minato was busy with Sound 4, oh boy, Naruto went ham. He immediately blitzed him in 8th grade, and absolutely, in a single punch, this time he used all of his power, because before he was actually holding back a little bit. But now, now he wasn't having it. For the second time now, he hit Orochimaru so hard that you could see Orochimaru for one second, but the next, he was stuck five meters deep in a wall, completely bloody, with a large hole in his stomach, which was the impact where Naruto hit him. Now at this point, you might think, well, it's Urchimaru, it's probably a clone. You're wrong, it wasn't a clone. And, Nar and Urchimaru can't just heal himself because he was caught off guard. He Naruto was way too fast. And now he's being prevented from healing himself. So is that gonna be the end? For Orochimaru? Is that gonna be the end? Oh no, no. Or will it? I'm just kidding. Naruto kills Orochimaru because he's sick of him. And then Kabuto tries to interfere, but he just gets hit away with single jutsu. The single fireball jutsu. Shiro blows him away like a candle. Ha ha ha. Anyways, happy. Everyone's happy. Well, not really, because people died, but. Well, the Konoha oh, well, crush didn't. Well, crush Konoha. So I guess people could be happy. Should. Everyone's fine. Not really, but. In comparison to the canon series, everyone's fine. No Kage were killed, cause the Kage, so the Kaze Kage is actually fine. Her status still alive. 
Um, Karu is fine, Naruto's fine. Kabuto and Nurchimaru are dead, so are the Sad Four, which Minato took care of. And Shiro, Naruto, and Karui are awarded the rank of Jonin. Um, yeah. That's just the Jonin. The Chunin are a little more complicated, but I won't go into that right now. So the entire Team 7 is now just Jonin. Which Namikaze House was going to celebrate with inviting Team 7 to a party. But who would have guessed Naruto and Shiro declined. By the way, if you're wondering, Naruto, for the past month and a half or so, or two months, has actually lived at Shiro's place. So, he kind of moved out. Yeah, they're living together. At the age of almost 13 now. Yeah, Naruto's going quick. Anyways... Sasuke won't go out of the village because, well, the Uchiha clan is still alive. Or is it? I don't even know if it's alive. I'm pretty sure I, I didn't make the Uchiha massacre. I think they're alive. If they're not, please comment it down below. But I'm, I, I think they're alive. So, and Sasuke doesn't have that rivalry with Naruto. So he's not leaving the village, and even if he wanted to, Urchmar's dead, so no escaping for Sasuke. And so Shiro and Naruto are both now considered Jonin. Oh, guys, I do apologize. Um, When I said Sasuke got the curse mark, but then Naruto took it off him, um, I meant Karui. Yeah, sorry, I got mixed up with some of my other series. It's Karui. So Naruto took the curse mark off of Kurui, so Kurui is a normal person now without a curse mark. But Naruto has the curse mark, but can control it. Anyways, now we do about a one week time skip. In this week, ever since the finals of the Chunin exams, everybody has been calling Shiro and Naruto especially heroes. And people now actually believe that Naruto is the child of prophecy instead of Kurui. No, not everybody thinks this. For example, Minato and Kushina, although they're proud of Naruto for what he did, they still think Kurui is the child of prophecy. But some villagers are now having doubts since she didn't do anything, but Naruto and Shiro protected the village. So people are kind of thinking that that's kind of sus, but anyways. <coughs> anyways, Shiro and also Kaguya now have an idea. They want, they want Naruto and Shiro to go off away from the village. At least for some time. Maybe a year or two. And when Shiro confronts Naruto about it, he seems okay with it. However, although he will tell people that he's leaving, he'll have 10 shadow clubs 24-7 around the village in case something bad happens, so he'll be contacted by his shadow clones. So he can come back to protect the village he loves. Well, I guess love is a strong word. The village he cares about. Because Shiro is the one he really loves. But he does want to protect Kuri no matter what. So he does want to look out for her. And then, after getting permission from Minato... Which Naruto doesn't really see as a father anymore, but more as a Hokage. They then leave the village. And now we cut to 
two years later. In this time, the village has been pretty peaceful ever since Urchimaru's attack because, well, it's mostly due to Urchimaru being their number one enemy, but now that he's gone, the only people that they really need to care about are the Akatsuki, but not not everyone actually knows about the Akatsuki because it's kind of a secret because it's dangerous to know so much information as Jiraiya does. But of course Minato is informed and so is Naruto and Shiro because they have clones everywhere and Anyways, Naruto, over this time, actually got a new dojutsu. Now, what is those dojutsu? You'll see. But anyways, we cut to Shiro and Naruto standing in front of the Konoha gates. And the two, the two joning on guard are like, wait. N Naruto? Is that you? It's me. It's me, alright. Oh, it's been a long time. It sure has. But Naruto... Naruto seems more serious than he used to be. But... Anyways... He probably just matured, right? However, his love and bond to Shiro has grown stronger by the day. And now, he even calls himself Naruto Otsutsuki, son of Kaguya and Ishiki, prince of the Otsutsukis. He's now fully accepted his title of the prince of the Otsutsuki planet. And as a royal amongst them. Anyways, while it's going around the village, when people see Shiro, they the only thing they think about is damn. So when Naruto and Shiro are walking in an alleyway, suddenly there's five people behind and in front of them, a little older than them. Hey, cutie, one of them says. Um, what are you doing? She asks. Oh, we just want to have a little fun with you. But when they look back at Naruto, which they don't know who Naruto is, but, or at least they didn't recognize him. Of course they know who he is, but they didn't recognize him. But then, once they see that not only is it the, well, son of the Hokage, but, god damn, he looks angry. He has six pass uh, sage mode with his Kurama slit-like eyes, which form a cross in the middle. However, he also has Tomoe in his eyes. What? What, is, what the hell is with, wrong with your eyes? You will not touch her. She's mine, got it? Uh, y y y yes, yes. Now leave, or I'll kill you. And with that, the boys around them run away. As Naruto, Naruto's aura right now is basically that of a killer. If they'd stayed, they'd all be gone right now. Like, gone, gone. But Naruto 
even when they're gone, still seems angry. So Shiro does the only thing that comes to her mind, and hugs him from the back, calming him down, and then his eyes go back to his normal blue. Because he actually stopped his genjutsu, because he got tired of it, and now he wanted his eyes to be normal, and actually found a way for the Byakugan to deactivate and for his normal human blue eyes to reactivate. Because he likes the color of his eyes more than the pale light of the Byakugan. So, Naruto is going around the village, but then he gets an idea. We should probably go to the Hokage. Alright then. When they knock on the Hokage's door, there is no answer. He probably didn't hear me. I'll just storm inside. And with that, he uses a weird jutsu, but without hand signs, and suddenly just walks through the door without opening it, as if he could just walk through walls. Hmm. In the room, he sees Naruto, eh, sorry, Minato, Kushina, what looks like his sister Karui, and some other genin, and a Jonin team leader. Who are you? Wait. Wait, Naruto? Is that you? It's me. But what, what happened to your eyes? What are you talking about? They're my normal eyes. But... What? 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 what you thought I was blind? Is that it? No. I have never been blind in my life. Karama saved me. And my mother. Wait, Karama? And who's your mother? Oh, whatever. And with that, Naruto puts a genjutsu on everybody in the room, so they forget what just happened. Wait. Is that you, Naruto? Kushina asks yet again, not remembering what just happened. Yeah, it's me. I was gone, but now I'm back. And w w what's with your eye? I found a way to restore my eye. But of course we know that that's not true. Naruto was never blind. Oh, so wait, can you see again? Yes, I can see again. That's wonderful, Naruto. Yeah, whatever. So, Kurui, I see you've become a genin. Big bro, where have you been? It's been so long. It's been long. But I'm happy to be back. So, Kakashi. Guys, I just found a major plot hole. Never mind. Guys, alright. Screw that. Um, Kari became a Jonin team leader, not a Genin. Sorry, she was already a Genin, and now she became a Jonin, alright? So, she has three people on her team. Konohamaru. And his two friends, which I forgot their names. But Karui is a Jonin, and Kakashi's not there. So, here's your team. Well, we just got back from our D ranked mission. 
Those missions are the worst. Right? Konohamaru yells out. I'm way too good for these. I need a harder mission, Kage. Konohamaru, how many times have I told you you're just beginning? C-ranked is the highest you can get. Well, then give me one of those. Fine, then. Kuri, do you think your team is ready? I think so. Well, then, your team is getting a D-ranked mission. I'll go with them, Naruto says. But, but why? That's none of your concern, but I will go with them. But, what's the meaning of this? It's not your concern. I will go with them. That's the final decision. Naruto seemed off, but nobody knew why. But Shiro seemed to know. He just wants to protect his little sister. Because even if she's a Jonin and she's just going on a C-rank mission, he's going to protect her for the rest of her life. Just like he's going to protect Shiro. I'm going to, Shiro says. Wait, but, but, but you guys are way too overqualified. Oh yeah? Well, I don't care. Don't worry, we know we don't need payment. We'll just go along. Uh, uh oh, okay. And with that, Naruto and Shiro disappeared. Naruto, you didn't have to be so harsh on your family, you know? And why did you tell them and then erase their memories? That's something that, that doesn't make sense. If you're gonna tell them, you can't erase their memories because then they will they won't remember. I know, but it was wrong of me to tell them. I just needed to get it out of my system. Okay. Well, you know, you always got me there for you. I know. Curry. I'll protect you. For the rest of my life. That's a promise. And with that, they went back to Shira's apartment. Which was a little dusty, but... Naruto had 50 of his shadow clones clean the place up in about two seconds, so, yeah. If you're wondering how 50 shadow clones fit in an apartment, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. All you need to know is Naruto is very fast at cleaning. Mother, you can come out now. Naruto weaves a hand sign as a clone starts coming out of Naruto, but it's not a clone of Naruto. Well, it's a clone made of Naruto, but it has the form of Kaguya Utsutsuki. He cuts back to about two weeks after Naruto and Shiro left, and Kaguya tells Naruto, Naruto, I want you to make a clone, any clone, no matter if wood, shadow clone, or any other. Just make a clone that has a physical body. Uh, okay. And Naruto does so. Now, put a transformation jutsu on it so it looks like me. Okay, but why? Just do it. Naruto does that. Now, concentrate on my voice, and let my chakra flow into the clone. And with that, suddenly, the clone seemed to awake from its trance, and move like a normal person would. <sighs> it feels so good to be in the physical world again, as it was Kaguya's voice, 
Wait, Mother, is that you? Yes. By putting Chakra into a physical body, you were able to... Not revive me, but... Have my consciousness in a real body. So you can talk to me without having to go to your mindscape. That's amazing. Well, I guess it is. Cut to Karui and her team standing just on the Konoha gates, where they're about to go on a mission, when suddenly behind them, Shiro, Naruto, and an Anbu come. What's with the Anbu? Oh, it he's just coming along. Don't worry about it. Uh, what do you mean? Just don't worry about it, Naruto says. Okay, fine then. But you do know I'm a Joni now, right? So you can tell me things. Yeah, but you're still my little sister. Really, Naruto? Yep. And Konohamaru and the rest of the Genin just laugh. So... Wait, Naruto, are you stronger than Kurui? And at that, Shiro just smiles. Hmm. I don't know. What do you think? Well, I think... I think that I would beat him in a fight, Kurui says. Is that so? Well, let's get... Well, let's settle the score. After we get back from this mission, shall we? We shall. And with that, they were off. But the Anbu didn't seem to say anything. It was like, it was just armor moving on its own without a real consciousness. Then suddenly... Five tuning, five from the right and five from the left, suddenly jump out of the bushes and surround them. Naruto, Shiro, and the Anbu are just standing still, but Karui looks a little bit worried as, yeah, she might be able to take them on, but what about her Genin team? They might get hurt. And Konohamura and the others are looking scared huh don't worry about it what are some tuning gonna do to me Konohamaru says this is nothing funny kid well guys get in position Curry sells when suddenly, a few of the Chunin blitz them and push Konohamaru to the ground. And one of them even sliced up Kuri's hand. Because she was fighting two of them, but one came from behind. You. When suddenly... Shiro looks at Naruto. You don't hurt my sister. You don't hurt my sister. <laughs> but then, Shiro hugs Naruto once more. Naruto, it's alright. No. It's not all right. And with that, the Anbu takes off his mask. And it's revealing that it's actually Naruto, what? Because the, the actual Naruto, or at least the one we thought was Naruto, 
was actually just a wood clone of him, and Naruto was suppressing his chakra inside the mask. And so, there was two Naruto's, because he wanted to hide his true power. But then, his eyes awakened once more. You. <sighs> Suddenly, Naruto blitzes all of the tuning, all slicing him with a single kunai. <sighs> then, he slowly walks to Karui, who was bleeding a little bit. Don't worry, Karui. I got you. Naruto. What was that? And what? why are you in Anbu clothes? Just rest. I'll heal you, and I'll explain everything to you later. And with that, Naruto actually put a Ganjutsu on Kurui, which knocked her out momentarily. And for you three, Shiro says, Why didn't you help your sensei? But, but, but we're only getting. What, what can we do? So what? What do you mean you're only getting? That's no excuse. You still have to help your sensei. You're shinobi, are you not? Well, but... Aren't you the Hokage's grandson? Aren't you supposed to be strong? But, 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 but... Yeah. You thought you were so great, didn't you? Naruto said. Um, Naruto. You have to get stronger to protect my sister. Else, I will have to. Is that clear? Uh, y y yes, Naruto. Fine, then. Let's go. On the way... There were two Jonin, each hiding in different bushes, as they were collecting intel on the group, because they were informed that they broke through the ten Shunin that were supposed to stop them. But Naruto mercilessly puts a Genjutsu on them, torturing them. Until they die. This isn't a B ranked mission. No, this is a B ranked mission, not a C ranked. Maybe even a low A ranked mission. <sighs> this is so annoying. It's whatever. Naruto? Y yes, Shiro? Can we go on a date later? Um, well, sure. But why now? Well, it's been some time. And I wanted to have you all for myself. Alright then. But we need to get to this village first. As they were ordered to go to a small village, similar to the Land of Waves mission, where they had to protect the people there whilst they were building a building which was going to be used to increase the village's wealth and communication to other villages as well as be used for trade. But, a certain person there 
was not a big fan of it and wanted to control that area all by himself. And so he paid henchmen so they would protect the place that he now owns. But Naruto just killed all of them. When they arrive in the village, everyone's staring at them. Especially because Naruto is holding Kurui in his arms. Um, who are you? We're the people that came here to protect you. Remember? From the hidden leaf? Uh, you actually made it through. Yeah. Why did you lie? Uh, what do you mean? Why did you lie? You said this was a searing commission. It wasn't. Well, we, we, we don't have the money. Hmm. Fine then. How long will it take? A about one and a half weeks. Alright, fine then. Do you have a place for us to stay? Um, y yes. Alright. I'll bring her there. Um, okay. As the village hasn't seen visitors from outside in a very long time. Because as I said, the henchmen surrounding the village didn't allow people to go into that territory. As it was theirs. Once Naruto lays Kurui down on her bed, Naruto and Shiro then go on a date. But before that, they told the three Genin to practice tree walking and explain to them how to do it. Then they left. But Shiro is looking at Naruto. Naruto? Yes, Shiro? I want you to do what you did with your sister to me. Uh, fine. Come here, then. As Naruto stood still, staring at her. And Shiro jumped onto him, and Naruto quickly caught her before she landed on the ground. As she wanted to be carried, just like Naruto carried Kurui. See? There you go. This is way more fun. Don't you mean? Don't you see it? I guess so. Naruto, you don't seem very happy today. Well, I'm annoyed. I can see that. Well, I hope I can make you happy, Naruto. You can always make me happy, Shiro. We cut to an hour later when they come back. Naruto's a little bit in a better mood. And the girl on Konohamaru's team has actually managed to somewhat tree walk and actually get to the top of the tree. Good job, Shira says. Thank you. Um, wh what's your name? Hmm. My name's Shiro, and I'm Naruto's girlfriend. G -g girlfriend So so you mean like you're dating? Yep. I love Naruto, and he loves me. Uh. Okay, but how old are you? Cause he, you don't seem much older than us. Mm. Well, that you're right. We're not that old. Well, at least I'm not. Looking over to Naruto, as they found out he was about two Earth days older than her. And she always told them that he's old. 
Shiro, you do know it's only two days, right? Yeah, but you're still Uru. <sighs> Whatever. So, Konohamaru, how have you been doing? Well, it's way too hard. I mean, I've been able to do it sometimes, but it's still tr it's still hard. Alright then. Let me do something. As Naruto puts his hand on Konohamaru's head, closes his eyes, and when he opens them again, Konohamaru feels a rush of power. Now try again. What? What is this? It's Konohamaru standing at a 90 degree angle on the tree. What, what did he just do? Well, I freed your pathways of chakra, so now it's easier for you to use your chakra. It's like, you could imagine it like cleaning a sewer so that the water can run free. I see. So why didn't you do this at the beginning? Because hard work pays off more than this. Okay. So how long is it gonna last? Well, that depends on you. And me. Well, what does it depend on? Well, if you train more, then it'll get easier, even when it's not open. And me? I can turn it off at any times. So don't you dare annoy me, or else I'll turn it off. That's not fair. Well, I don't make the rules. Shira is just smiling. Curry got back to consciousness, and immediately one of Naruto's clones informed him. Oh, what? Naruto? Wait, why, why wasn't I awake? Don't worry, my real self will come, just, just wait a second. As Naruto suddenly walks in, jumping through the window, but not shattering it. Wait, so this is a shadow clone? Well, more or less. So, why was I not awake? I put you under Genjutsu. You did what? Naruto, this is my mission. You do know that, right? I'm the Joni leader of this mission. Yes. So what? So what? I'm in control here. Oh yeah? And I'm your older brother, which means I'm in control here. But, but, but that's not fair. Oh yeah? Deal with it. Naruto, you can't treat me like a little sister anymore. But you are my little sister. Yeah, but I'm a Jonin. So what? I'm a Jonin too. And an Anbu now. Uh, an Anbu? Yep. I'm an Anbu. I asked Minato. And he allowed me to become an Anbu. As after this mission, I will start my official Anbu duties. I see, that that makes sense, but why an Anbu? You could have been a Jonin squad leader like me. No, working alone or with a partner is much better for me than working in a squad. Well, I guess that makes sense. You've always been, how, how do I say this, a lonely person. Oh, really? That's how you're going to describe me? Yep. Yep, that's how I'm going to describe you. And then Shira walks in. Through the door. Hi, you two. Oh, uh, Shiro. Uh, are you doing better now? Shira asks. Uh, yeah. I had a really long sleep. Well, what were you dreaming of? Um, 
Um, that doesn't matter. Oh? Why are you blushing? None of your concern. Anyways. Hmm. Naruto smirks. I think I know exactly what. No, 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 you don't. Anyways, that's not the point issue here. Where are my students? They're outdoors. Training. Tr training? But training what? Tree walking. I didn't know how to do it. Oh, I see. Wait, but who told them to? Us. You think we're incapable of being shinobi? Well... As Kuri looks in, up at the window. Really? Come on. We were joning earlier than you. <sighs> Whatever. You're only a brother to me. <laughs> but then you're only a sister to me. But, but... <sighs> As we now skip to the second last day of building the actual building for trade for the village. And the three Genin have now been able to do tree walking no problem and have even started to do some water walking exercises. Kurui is back to full strength but then they see a man with yellow hair and he had 20 people standing around him each looking like they were gonna do something which wasn't pleasant know what you might be asking me? Don't ask me, I don't know. Anyways. They were looking prepared to fight. But Naruto, without blinking once, quickly dashed forward, used a water jutsu to throw them off the street into the mud. <laughs> and Shiro just started laughing. <laughs> Nerd, what was that? Well, you know, animals play around with their prey before they kill it. Uh, Naruto, come on, there's children here. Yeah, you know we're children as well, right? Whatever. Just do it and get over with it. All right, and then suddenly for everyone, the entire forest gets becomes white as Naruto put a genjutsu on the entire forest area so that nobody could see the bodies. Naruto. You know genjutsu don't work on me, right? Yeah, I know. I wasn't planning on putting you under a genjutsu anyways. But, uh, Naruto, that's not fair. I'm your sister. So what? You're only a, a sister. Just kidding. You wanted to be treated like a jonin, didn't you? Well, yeah, but I'm still your sister. So what? Choose one. And stick with that. You can't choose both. As the last day rolls around, the village finishes the building, and everyone's happy, and the tower is called the Great Narrative Tower. I think you can see where I'm referencing this off. Anyways, the, everybody, well, the new Team 7, along with Naruto and Shiro, go back to the Hidden Leaf Village. 
And whilst walking back, Naruto and Shiro are holding hands as if they were just on a date. Whilst Kurui is walking pretty relaxed, and the three children, or rather Genin, are just talking to each other. And when they arrive at the Konoha gate, they're greeted by the two Jonin, which Kurui gives her mission report to. And Naruto, he goes straight to Minato's office, the Fuet Hokage's office to be exact, and tells him, I want to be an Anbu alone. Um, what do you mean, Naruto? Each Anbu works in a team, you know this. No. I'm gonna work alone with Shiro. Just us two. Is that clear? Naruto, you've changed. Is that so? Minato Namikaze. You know... How about we duel? A duel, huh? Alright then. If you beat me, you and Shiro can be on a team of two as Anbu, Minato said. However, if I win, you have to move back to the Namikaze compound. As Naruto thought, but immediately said yes. So it was arranged that they both go outside. Shiro, Karui, and Kushina, as well as Kakashi, were gonna watch. This was gonna be a epic battle, you could say. But not quite what everybody was thinking about. Ready, set, go, Kushina said, as immediately Minato threw his flying Raijin kunais at Naruto which Naruto didn't seem faced by, as right before they hit him, they seemed to disappear. Hmm, what's that? <sighs> no matter. Minato quickly teleported to his kunai, trying to uppercut Naruto from the bottom. However, right before, he was suddenly stopped by something. As if there was an invisible clone of Naruto stopping him in his tracks. This was the Limbo clone of Naruto, which he could easily control without exhausting much of his chakra. When are you actually gonna fight? Fourth Hokage, Minato said. Sorry, Naruto said. <clears throat> Fine then. Let's get serious, Minato responded, and quickly threw a bunch more kunais and started teleporting from one to, a, to the another. And for people spectating, it looked like Minato was nowhere to be seen, because he was teleporting to his kunais so quickly that even though he stayed at one for a few milliseconds, he was moving so fast you couldn't even see him. But for Naruto, Minato was going in slow motion. Oh, as well as Shira, of course. And so, right as Minato threw about 10 kunais from a lot of different directions, Naruto seemed to dodge each one without moving his feet, as if he could just predict each of the kunais. He didn't even look back, he just simply moved his shoulders a little bit. As well as, well, went down into his knees to dodge. What the? <clears throat> it's as if he has the, the Byakugan, Minato thought. 
as he only recognized this wild field of view of the Hyugas. Which he wasn't wrong about. Snaruto had his somewhat invisible Byakugan on, which allowed him to have a 360 degree move uh, sight. 360 degree area of sight. Which is very useful in a battle. <sighs> I'm gonna end this now. This is getting boring. As Naruto clenched his fists together and shouted, Ninth Gate. Hidden Gate of Secrets. As suddenly, a weird aura seemed to envelop Naruto. And before anyone could react, Minato was punched in the back and was slowly falling backwards. Well, rather forwards, but you know what I mean. As they just saw Minato fall unconscious. And that's it. Naruto won their duel. Without much sweat. Well, to be honest, Naruto didn't seem to be exhausted at all. For without them knowing it, this was far from Naruto's true potential slash strength. So, about 20 minutes later, when Minato wakes up again, he says, <sighs> You won, Naruto. You and Shiro can go on a separate team, just you two. And I guess anybody else that you want to invite to your team. But, no buts. We had an agreement. So, just give me, just, you know what, whatever. Do you allow me to do all type of missions? Uh. Sure. Okay. See you in a week. Um, a week. You know what? Fine. A day, I guess. See you tomorrow morning. Wait, why? But before Minato could get an answer, Naruto and Shiro disappeared. <laughs> that kid's really mysterious, huh? Kushina said. Yeah, and it's not funny, Minato responded. On the next day, in the morning to be precise, Kushina, Karui, and Minato hear a knocking on the Namikaze compound whilst they're all eating breakfast together. As Minato walks over to open the door, he sees Naruto and Shiro standing in the doorstep um k why are you here hmm you're not gonna invite me in huh um no no of course uh, come in i mean this is your house after all hmm i guess so um so what did you mean yesterday Oh, right. Um, I took the liberty of going through your paperwork yesterday evening. And, um, I mean, first of all, it's very messy. Second of all, I did all the Andu missions that you have. Wait, all, all of them? But, but, but there were like a hundred. Uh, yeah. But you allowed me to do all missions. I specifically asked you. So, I did all of them. Um, j how did you alone do that? Oh no, don't get the wrong idea. Sure, it helped me, of course. But, but still, that's only two people. Oh yeah, we were done at like 30 minutes later. Um, um, uh, okay. Uh, Naruto, 
Uh, yeah, Shiro? What is it? Um, you kind of forgot something. Uh, we- Remember, we were done so quick, so we actually just did all the missions for Konoha. Oh, yeah, right. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah. You know, till we kind of did all the missions. Wait. No. All, all, all of them? But, but there was, there, there was, there were two missions that, no, please tell me you didn't. No, don't worry, I didn't do that. As neither Kushina, Kurui, nor Minato, nor Kakashi knew what Minato Naruto were talking about. As there was an extremely secretive mission that was agreed upon from the village elders as well as Minato and Hiruzen and was very secret. None of the Anbu or even the elite Jonin of Konoha knew about it. It was a mission to execute and assassinate the fourth Raikage as well as the second mission was to take their Jinchuriki, as not only was he a powerful ninja, but it would also allow Konoha to have two Jinchurikis, which would truly allow it to secure its spot as the strongest village in the world. Now, don't worry, I didn't do that, but, you know... Next time, you should really consider about your missions, you know? Wait, wh what do you mean next time? Shiro? Wh what did you do? Oh, nothing. Um, we just went to the Land of Lightning, and we saw, in the village hidden in the clouds, we saw the Raikage, but... He didn't really seem like a threat, so we didn't kill him. But, you know, it doesn't really make sense. Why do you want to kill him anyways? Um, as Kushina and Kakashi's eye drop, sorry, jaw drops. You want to kill the Raikage? Kakashi asked. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes I do. As when Kakashi looked over to Kushina, he saw her hair starting to fly up in the air. Minato. No, please, 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 please. As Minato was now running out of the out of their house into the village for kushina didn't want another shinobi war as the last one was quite devastating to them as well as minato students obito and rin which led to kill them well as far as they know at least um Anyways, about half an hour later, Minato and Kushina both go back to the Namikaze house with a big, big red mark on Minato's head. Looks like mom really did bang you up this time, eh? Naruto said. Um, Naruto? What is it? You called me mom so so what uh you're my mom after all aren't you minato do you have something to tell us as naruto was now looking over no 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 i promise she's your mom okay just checking so why is it weird if i call you mom it's not it's just you've never called me mom before um, okay, well, 
Anyways, let's get to the important stuff. Um, oh yeah, also, Naruto continued. I won't kill the Raikage even if you order me to. Naruto, that's not your decision to make. Well, I don't care. If either you or the elders tell me to do that, I will not do it. Why not? Thought you were going to be loyal to this village. No. There's only one thing that I'm loyal to. And that's myself and the ones I love. Wait, but that's... That's two, Kuri said. Oh, shut up. <laughs> As Kuri was now snickering at Shiro and Naruto's relationship. You know, Kurui, Shiro said, I think that you'll understand when you have a boyfriend. A, 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 a boyfriend? Kurui said, yeah, a boyfriend. Just like I do. With Naruto. And I know that he's going to protect me no matter what happens. So I don't have to worry when I go on missions. Um, but, but then why are you a ninja? Well, well, that was before. Well, that's actually not true. It's not before I met Naruto, but I don't know. It seemed like fun. Um, th that's the reason? Hmm, maybe. Anyways. <sighs> yeah, as I was saying, if you try or do successfully kill the Raikage, I will turn on this village. I promise you that, Naruto said. But why? If you start the fourth great shinobi war, that might, even if it's just a small chance, it might hurt people that I care about, which means that I will not support or even start the war. Meaning that I will fight against it. And I don't care if I'll have to destroy this entire village to build it from scratch. If that would mean that there's no war, then I will do that. Um. Uh, okay then, fine. But Minuto was not thinking of giving up his plans to kill the Raikage. He was still gonna do it. Anyways, we cut forward to the Hidden Cloud. As a group of Anbu were already sent by the two elders, which I forgot their names, but I used to know them some time ago. Okay, so the two elders sent a group of Anbu to kill the Raikage. They sent Gai, Kuranai, and Asuma along with a group of elite Anbu. Which included Itachi, Shisui, and more. Now, Kakashi would have normally been on this mission if he wasn't with, um, with Minato, and they didn't want to tell Minato that this is going to be happening, because Minato would have either wanted to go there or been against it, so they didn't want to involve Minato. The team of Shinobi just entered the Hidden Cloud Village and was now near the tower, the Raikage Tower, and was about to assassinate him. When suddenly, they heard a rapping voice. But before they could think about what they were hearing, suddenly a man 
with sword with a sword in his mouth, jumped out of the window of the Raikage Tower and tried to attack them. What the? Hmm. This guy, this this shinobi, certainly understands the way of youth. Guy said. This is not the time, Kurunai said. Oh, why do I have to do this? Asuma said. You, go! One of the Anbu said, pointing at another. When suddenly, before they could engage in battle, they saw two figures. Actually, they saw three figures. It was Naruto, Shiro, as well as the fourth Hokage himself, Minato Namikaze, the yellow flash of the leaf. What the? Hokage-sama, why are you here? What the? Wh where am I? You're in the cloud. The shinobi were about to assassinate a, the Raikage. Well, but I didn't order that, no. Your two counselors did. But how did you know about this? Mm, I keep tabs on things. Um, okay. You, immediately, retreat and take all your men with you. Yes, sir, the Anbu said. Kurunai, Asma, Guy. You as well. Go back to Kona immediately. Yes, sir. We're sorry. As all of them retreated. But when Minato was about to teleport with his Hiraishin marker back to Konoha, Naruto put his hands on Minato's shoulder. Not quite yet. You wanted to start a war, right? So go for it. You're here now. Start a war. I dare you. Um, Naruto, but I don't want to fight against you. Why is that? You're the Hokage, not my father. Um, Naruto, if you do this, there's no going back anymore. Same goes for you, old man. As Minato put his hand on his Hiraishin marker kunai, when Shiro said, Boys, you don't need to do this here. Look who's there. As she was pointing at the Raikage's standing on the top of the tower. Minato, you want to start the fourth, huh? Named after you or what? Hmm. Let's go. Men, get him! As suddenly, dozens of Anbu and Chunin and Jonin started jumping from rooftop to rooftop, pushing and attacking the three Konoha shinobi. <sighs> I'm not involved. As Naruto and Shiro suddenly started floating up into the air. What the? What are you doing? The Raikage asked. Don't you remember me from the Chunin exams? Hmm? I'm that boy. What? You... You're him. Hmm. Come back to make war? No. But he will. Nar as Naruto nodded his head at Minato, who was not struggling, but he was pretty busy fighting the dozens of shinobi who were now fighting him. He won't stand a chance against all of us. Oh. Well, I don't know. 
I don't know. I mean, if you can imprison that, then I don't know. I won't care. I mean, it really depends if I care, you know. Shiro, do you care? As she shrugged her shoulders. I only care if my loved ones care, so yeah. Sorry, Minato. As he was now yelling down. As Minato was getting sick of this and threw Kunai up at the rooftop and teleported next to A. Who are now staring each other into the eyes. Just like it used to be, huh? Don't you think I haven't trained for this, Minato? Don't you worry, I'm not rusty, Minato assured. <clears throat> Guys, let's keep this civil, shall we? Shira said. But you invaded us, and that was a grave mistake. <sighs> Listen to her, or you're gonna die, Naruto said. Oh yeah, what are you gonna do, boy? Just cause you're a jonin doesn't mean you can take on a kage. As suddenly, when the Raikage blinked and opened his eyes again, he saw kunai to his throat. As well as one to Minato's. Each one were just shadow clones of Naruto. But even when they tried to hit him back with their elbows, the shadow clones didn't poof into air. They seemed to be able to take in hits without annihilating themselves. If you start a war, I'll kill both of you. The Raikage surrenders because he knows he has no chance against them. And of course, Minato does the same as he already lost a fight. And he is going to get stomped by Naruto. So he ain't going to mess with them. But secretly... They both don't give up. They both prepare their armies in secret and go to war. As we cut back to about two days, or you know what? A week. A week after the events when the Anbu and Jonin almost raided the Raikage village, the Hidden Cloud village. So, the Raikage and the Hokage, A and Minato, have been at it for a few days now. And people have died. Warriors have fallen. However, Naruto doesn't know about this as he's gone on a trip with Shiro. They're out of town, you could say. They're gone. But because Naruto trusted Minato at that point, as well as Shiro telling him not to, Naruto didn't leave back any clones. He just didn't. And so... When they came back, Naruto saw, as they walked past, the hospital. It was overflowing with wounded shinobi. And when they entered, they asked why so many people are injured. Just to have a lady tell them that they are at war with the hidden cloud who's allied with the Hidden Sand now. Because, well, the fourth, rank, the fourth Kazekage isn't a big fan of Minato either, I'm just gonna say. And, the Stone Village, 
especially Onoki, was actually funding the Hin Cloud and Hin Sen. They didn't want to be in the spotlight at war, but they did fund them with medical supplies, food, and other shinobi tools. So they were basically in a three-way alliance all against the Leaf, and the Leaf was taking heavy blows. It was unable to hold them back. So Minato ordered most of Shinobi to guard the walls in case any in case the villages tried an invasion. But thankfully they hadn't yet. However, that's when Naruto hears a loud bang. As when he runs outside the hospital, they see a part of the co of the Konoha wall shattered, broken, and behind it are standing one thousand shinobi. Some from the hidden stone, hidden sand, and hidden cloud. Amongst them were the fourth Raikage, the fourth Kaze Kage, as well as Onoki, the third. Um, yeah, I think the third Tsuchikage. They were ready to take over the Hidden Leaf Village and become the strongest alliance and the strongest shinobi force on the entire planet. However, one man was going to stand in the way and it wasn't about to be Minato. And although Minato was standing on another part of the wall that wasn't broken, staring them dead in the eyes, giving them a glance of death. However, before they engaged in battle, Naruto stood between them, flying, floating in the air. Stop! Naruto shouted. If any one of you engages in battle, I'm gonna kill every single one of you. Azanoki was furious. Who the hell do you think you are? Men, get him! As suddenly, about a hundred kunai were flying at Naruto's direction. But oh boy. In the next two seconds, about 50 shinobi fell to the ground. With Naruto standing right behind Onoki. What the? You're gonna pay? As the Raikage rushes towards him with the Lariat, as well as Killer B coming from the other side, Naruto disappears once more, and now a hundred shinobi are dead on the ground. What kind of monster are you? The fourth Kazekage says. Hmm, funny that you say that, huh? How about Gara? Is he doing okay? <sighs> You're gonna pay. As now, all the remaining shinobis, including the three Kage, are all rushing at Naruto, trying to get the best of him. But similar to how Madara, when he, rev when he was reanimated, destroyed the Shinobi Alliance, Naruto is doing the same. As he now turned on his Yak Gun and Sage Mode, and is absolutely destroying everybody. And he does that until about a tenth of the Shinobi are left.
But now he stopped killing them. Now he's just hitting a certain point in their body, which makes them go unconscious. It makes them fall unconscious. And it's like a chakra point, but kind of different. So now that only about a hundred shinobi are still conscious and standing. The Raikage, Kazekage, as well as Anoki, fall to their ground. Fall to their knees, to be exact. And suddenly, they say, we're sorry. We will return to our villages and pay for what we did. We're sorry. But Naruto knows that they're lying, as he can see that their heart is pounding, but not as in that they're scared that Naruto's gonna kill them, no. As their heart's pounding as if they're lying, which they are. You hold me for a fool, do you? I know you're lying. I can see it. So either you're gonna be honest, or I'm gonna kill you and replace you with a fit leader. Onoki. You're too old anyways, aren't you? How dare you? You're gonna pay! As suddenly... A huge beam of particle style flies towards Naruto, but seems to hit him, but not do any damage. As Naruto just put up a perfect barrier around him. A perfect shield, where nothing of the outside can hurt him, or even touch him. Alright then. Tsukuyomi. As Naruto twitches his eyes, and suddenly all three Kage fall unconscious. As they're dreaming of years and years of torture until they submit to Naruto's will. And so. They then pay for what they did, literally and metaphorically. They pay for the medical things, they, the medical supplies that the hospitals need to heal the injured shinobi that were hurt. They pay for the walls and buildings that they destroyed, the outpost posts and Houses that were annihilated in battle. And they make an alliance. Which will prevent any of them to wage war against each other or another enemy nation without everyone's agreement. And now, now we skip forward about 10 years. Naruto, he's become Hokage. Minato was set out of office as he had started yet another war, which nobody knew if he could have actually won the war. The elders were replaced as they played a big role in starting the war, as they wanted some Anbu and Jonin to assassinate Akage, which, of course, they would have been unable to do, because they're just regular shinobi, nowhere near Kage level. Well, of, of course, except Guy with his gates, but, you know, we're not going to count him. Naruto and Shiro are now happily married. And... They even have a child, which they called Jiraiya. 
Actually, no, they didn't call him Jiraiya. They had one daughter, which they called Kaguya, in honor of Naruto's mom, because Naruto, with agreement of both Kaguya and Shiro, decided not to revive Kaguya. And they were going to disband the, the clone with Kaguya's will. As it was now Kaguya's time to go forever. She had lived for far too long. And even if she was revived, what would she want to do? I mean, she had done what she dreamed about for years, which is see her son in the image of herself save the people and bring peace. And that's all she truly wanted. So it was her time to go. And so Naruto named his daughter after Kaguya. He became the fifth Hokage. And Shiro is a very well respected Jonin, as well as one of Naruto's head advisors, along with Shikamaru, of course. Kurui is still a Jonin, but she doesn't lead a team anymore. Kanhamaru became a Jonin as well, actually. And it's now after Hiroos and Saratobi's death, the third Okage. He is now living on his legacy as a Saratobi, along with Asuma, who now has a child with Kuru with sorry, not Kurui. Um Oh, I forgot her name. What's her name? Kurunai. Sorry about that. So Kurunai and Asma now have a child, which is just the same as in Boruto. So that's truly most of the story. I'm sorry if I took it a little long and then ended it short, but I will be finishing more of my series as I did today because I don't want to leave them open-ended. Because that gives me the opportunity to start new series, which I will enjoy more. And I truly hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, subscribe. See ya.